I don't even celebrate Christmas. You will now. Yeah. Let it be known that Guganik has not celebrated Christmas until he has seen Home Sweet Home Alone. And on that note, welcome everybody to the beginning of the Home Alone arc. It's the holiday season. Let's start recording. Oh, you didn't start recording? Well, you said all, all that good material, and the only time you have good material, you don't record it. SMH. Amazing. Moving on. So for Christmas this year, you're gonna get us watching two good movies, one mediocre movie, and uh, a couple heaps of shit. You get both coal and good stuff in your stocking. We're, we're watching every single Home Alone movie throughout the course of the month, and no, we are not going to be doing this all in one single video. That's not happening, because I, would, I, I want to get this out in time for the holidays so that we don't completely miss the window and have to force it back to next year. And considering that I'm currently in the midst of Owl House copyright hell, I am not at all confident in my ability to actually get a six movie commentary through. Consider it was it was it was just as bad for the Cars triple feature. That was three movies. Now add three more on top of that. Yeah. It's not gonna go well considering how much stricter YouTube is with longer videos than they are with shorter videos. So you can think of it sort of as a countdown for to Christmas by releasing these videos over the course of the month. So you have a little bit of holiday cheer at a time. It's like it's like an advent it's like an advent calendar, except for sometimes when you open up the flap, you'll get a piece of shit instead of chocolate. Yeah, like it's like the, the countdown to Christmas, but it's it's more like the Majora's mask countdown. Insert number of movies until home sweet home alone, whatever the fuck. Yeah, if this was all one video, Trevor would want to get a lump of coal for Christmas solely to beat his head with it. Now, with that being said, I am immediately going to break that rule for this first video because we're going to watch the first two back to back. And the reason why is because they're the only two movies that actually involve the same setting and the same group of characters. They're the only ones that, you know feel like they're part of the same series. I mean, technically, technically the fourth one also involves the McAllister family, but it may as well not because they've all been recast and the situation is borderline unrecognizable from that of the first two movies. They're also the only two that are almost identical in terms of plot structure, and they're also the only two that are really in contention for which one's the best of the series. I, I think the third one has developed something of a very small, but also very, very dedicated fan base, but it's mainly just the first two that get talked about as to which which is the best Home Alone movie, and everything after three, no, no one, no one even wants to acknowledge the existence of what happens after Home Alone three. Most people don't even know about Home Alone five, like honestly, or six, or four, really. Six wasn't four like a TV movie though. I think so. I, Doesn't unless, it have like a two out of ten? I believe it does. I believe it is the lowest rated Home Alone movie. So the first movie has a 7.7, second movie has a 6.8, third movie has a 4.6, fourth movie, 2.6, fifth movie back up to 3.5, and the Home Sweet Home Alone is 3.6. So... Everyone watching this video right now, go to IMDB, go to Home Alone 2, and give it 10 stars until we get it to a 6.9 out of 10. That's your homework. The rest of them, we'll deal with them when we get to them. But for now, we're just going to be checking out the first two back to back and seeing which one is the better made movie of the two. It is probably the single most nostalgic movie franchise that I have seen. I remember as a kid, I was actually just obsessed with these movies to the point where one time, uh, this funny story, I was at my family's house and uh, I decided it would be just a really, really good idea to just set up booby traps in their basement. Uh, I may or may or uh, may not have exited that, uh, that place with a broken arm. Perhaps, and, you know, just maybe or maybe not. But yeah, other than that, Home Alone 1 and 2, I like two more than the first one, even though one is probably the objective better one. I subjectively like Home Alone 2 the best. I look forward to watching these films and then wonder what I have gotten myself into like from the fourth onwards. But uh, yeah, regardless of quality of Home Sweet Home Alone, it will still be my best celebration of Christmas I've ever gotten. Think of that what you will. So I have not seen anything beyond the fourth movie. I, I watched the first two every December, even as an adult. I, I watched them every year as a kid, and I watched them every year as an adult. They, they're just the quintessential classic holiday film that I, I don't think I'll ever get tired of seeing. I watched the third one a couple times as a kid. Not as much as the first two, but I, 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 it was still enjoyable enough to where I, I actively chose to put it on the TV every now and again. The fourth one, I, I watched once, and then never did that shit again. The only reason why I've, I've watched those four is because for years I thought they were the only ones. I, ha I had a DVD set that contained the first four Home Alone movies, and then Home Alone 5 was sprung on me miraculously one year, 
and then I a- actively have, have avoided it f- until this point. And Home Sweet Home Alone is just I I don't even want to I don't even want to think about. I can't. Why are there six Home Alone movies? Why are there money. six? Money. Nostalgia. Disney uh-huh. needed money and they're stocking for Christmas. It should have stopped after the second one, and arguably it should have even stopped after the first one. Anyway, here's the part where OJ says he hasn't seen any of these movies. Well, I that that is true. However, I do ha- I have seen part of one of them. I don't know which one. It's the it's the one with remotes. I know I know there was a house with a lot of remote controlled things. The fourth one. I don't remember much more of that. I don't know which one it is. I watched part like half an hour of it with my grandmother, but unfortunately at the time I literally couldn't understand English well enough, so I had to I, I kinda just gave up on the movie. And that's how that went. Uh, I've seen nothing else. So now is the time to rectify that that problem. I know that there are Christmas movies, which, yeah, I, I also had my Christmas movies when I was younger. The, those being completely related to this one. Maybe people know the Polar Express movie. That's yes. a good movie. Polar Express. I've seen that one a lot. The Polar Express, the Home Alone movies, and Jingle All the Way were the three that I w- watched the most consistently as a kid. For me, it was uh, for me it was a Polar Express. Uh, sometimes like the Harry Potter movies because that was just a thing we tended to watch in, around Christmas time. And um, I, I guess the the more the most recent Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie which also has somewhat of a Christmas theme related to it. I like how I've seen none of the films you've mentioned so far. I've seen Jingle All the Way, but not Polar Express. Polar Express might work for an interesting commentary, because I I know I loved it as a kid. I'm not entirely certain how well it would hold up as an adult. Same here. I I, I would love I would love to watch that. You're talking about a a Polar Express commentary when you're overlooking how amazing a Jingle All the Way commentary would be. Oh, don't 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 worry. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Jingle All the Way is also on my radar. It's on the list. We 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 will most certainly be watching Jingle All the Way at some point because that that is that. And is we'll peak. be our brain cells. Our brain cells will be jingling away after that happens. We will just do a double feature with that and the Polar Express. No. Just do a Christmas. Just all the Christmas movies into one video, just like a 20 hour long video, no. all the Home Alones, Polar Express, Jingle All the Way, throw the Harry Potter movies in there for OJ. Barring any further comments, shall we get this train, wagon train a rolling? We should get the Polar Express rolling, Trevor. Okay, oh, you've, you've wasted it, you've already wasted it, I was gonna, we, we, we should save that one for when we actually do watch the Polar Express, you've wasted it. We're never watching the Polar Express. Okay, on go, three, two, one. Go. Gotta say though, it's very long time ago since I saw the 20th Century Fox logo. Like, I, I don't even know when. Also, it was the cut short version for me. Hooray. I get to make really shitty snow puns. So, interesting thing that probably only OG will care about, but the person- Harry who... Potter directed oh, yeah, the Chris first Columbus. Movies. Yes. Yeah. I really wish that he stayed for all the other movies, but he stopped directing because obviously all the Harry Potter movies are recorded in the UK and he wanted to be with his family, which is very understandable. Would you say there was a noticeable decline once he left the director's chair position? Well, uh, or was there an increase in quality? The third Harry Potter movie is my favorite one, except Harry Potter 4 is shit, and then they got another director for... And so Harry Potter 3 had a different director, then Harry Potter 4 had a different director, then they got the director for Harry Potter 5 through 8, and that those movies were fine. Wasn't Prisoner of Azkaban directed by Alfonso Cuaron? Yes. Oh yeah, Trevor's gonna watch a movie from him when he watches Children of Men eventually. He, eventually. That, that man had that man has talent. Unlike the the, the shit had that the, unlike the shit had that did the fourth movie and didn't even want to read the book nor wanted to watch the third movie because the book was too long. Why did he get the directing job? Okay, book I get. Not watching the movie you're making a sequel to? Uh, th- th- yeah, you're dumb. Yeah, OJ, OJ cares about the director of this movie being the same as Harry Potter. I care that two of the actors of Home Alone 2 now have a mugshot. We are not the same. Why? Which? Uh, Macaulay Culkin and Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna wait. I knew he shows up. I was gonna wait till we got there to, ma- to Girl, make a mugshot show. That is peak profile pic material, dude. Holy oh shit! God. Me when mom says I can't open the presents a day. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait for Humble to commentary. Anyway. Why didn't you save it until that, uh... Even if every person in this house had a room dedicated to themselves, that still wouldn't work. There's so many people in this house. Well, that's, that's, what, that's the thing that I like about this opening, is that they need to sell you out of the gate how insanely hectic the lifestyle is for the McAllisters, and they... Yeah, opening shot, how big their fucking house is. That, and also just kids constantly running around. There's always, there's always something in the... When there's more than just a couple people in the shot, there's always something in the background that's happening to make the house feel lived in. Yeah, you have to, to work very hard to convince us that they, to believe in the premise of the parents forgot about their kid yeah. while going to, to a flight. And also, it's really established that they're, they're kind of shitty parents, so... Uh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> they're kind of shitty parents. Do you know what the shampoo is, Fuller? I don't know. I love that his name is fucking Fuller. Because he's always full of liquid for at least a little bit. He's always, he's always full. Yeah, the parents, they saw him, they're like, yep, that's a Fuller. Also, I love the casting of Joe Pesci in this movie. It's absolutely amazing. I've said this before, Joe Pesci was in Goodfellas and Home Alone in the same year. So I'm pretty sure on the set of Home Alone, they had a swear jar for him. Uh, I could be spreading misinformation on the internet again, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I, I have also heard that. I, I don't think that's unsubstantiated. I've also seen him in My Cousin Vinny. What the French call les incompetents. For the longest time, I had no idea what the fuck that meant as a kid. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's literally just incompetent. Amazing. Yeah, like, it's simple Great. enough. <laughs> yeah, a Canadian not knowing French is, uh, is something that would probably get you expelled out of Quebec. <laughs> I'm living alone! I'm living alone! <laughs> He's just like, what the actual fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> How did I end up in this position? <laughs> Is this how is the house it? not exploded yet? <laughs> how is the how is the house not collapsed under the weight of this many idiots? I'm surrounded by idiots. Oh my god. Maybe he's just trying to be nice. Or maybe he's dug up dead bodies. I said the media for that I also had. We're all buried down here, Georgie. Yeah. Look out. <laughs> Here it makes sense that he would be scared of that guy because of the people around him making him seem like he's actually Satan incarnate. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just Buzz trying to terrorize his younger siblings, which older siblings, from what I can tell, are quite yeah. efficient at doing. Yeah, I think he needs to buzz off. <laughs> this guy cannot stop hitting this fucking statue. This poor statue, the pizza guy, it's like, it's literally like there's a goddamn magnet attached to this statue that just drags <laughs> this car in. It is kind of a in. shit place to put a statue, but then again. Oh yeah, just, just in case you steer your car directly into it. It's like having a pylon on the road and being like, wow, this traffic cone is really hard to avoid, I gotta be honest. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a motto of 20 minutes or less or you don't pay. You gotta become goddamn baby driver out here with the mountain of the pizza tower over here. Holy shit. <laughs> Even for the amount of people in this house, that seems a little excessive. I guess they just prepared for they just prepared for like <laughs> multiple days pizza. Mr. McAllister? Yeah. Mr. McAllister who lives here? Yes. Good, because somebody owes me 122 50 So we're just checking the neighborhood to see if everyone's taking the proper precautions, that's all. We have uh, automatic timers for our lights, locks for our doors. That's about as well as anybody can do these days, right? Does Santa Claus have to go through customs? That's actually a legitimate question. Does Santa Claus need to go through customs? No way he is getting his reindeer through airport security. Well, he, he teleports. That's how he does it. How else does he go around uh, every single household? All right, got it. So Santa Claus, Santa Claus is an Enderman, confirmed. He just shoves the fucking pizza into his mouth. <laughs> go easy on the Pepsi. He, he, I don't think he can get any further. placements. His smile did, he's like, oh yeah, I drank the fucking Pepsi, Kevin. It's, it's like, actually, he's actually conniving, concocting an evil oh, scheme no. to wet the bed for he Kevin. He is like, he is like, literally, he is like, actually the rogue pisser. Jesus, that's a lot of wasted and then he And then he spills waste. the Pepsi, no. and then he's just gonna blame Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> just chucks the fucking Pepsi bottle, just yeet. Oh, Dang, bro, throw oh, out his no. You, he started it. Look what you internet. did, you little jerk. <laughs> the shot's great. Why do I get treated like skull? Also a classic case of the first thing to happen pulls your attention toward the second thing that happens. So they don't care about what Buzz did, they only care about Kevin physically tackling him. Yeah, it's like, it's amazing, it's amazing. Every time at school, literally every yeah. time, someone's bullying you for like weeks and then you do something back and then the teacher only notices you doing the something back. Every fucking time. Like the teacher's just sitting there like, nah, whatever. And then you do something back. You should have been the bigger man and not done anything. Excellent. 
I also like that you can hear the the pizza car dry, sk like skirting his way out of the driveway. The tire <laughs> Maybe he'll open the door and uh, the statue will be falling over again. Yeah, yeah, no, that's like a perfect alarm system. Literally, just get your get the statue and like make it so whenever you hit it, it makes a really loud alarm sound, so that everyone who drives in will always <laughs> hit the statue. Just stay up there. I don't want to see you again for the rest of the night. I don't want to see you again for the rest of my whole life. I hope you don't mean that. You'd feel pretty sad if you woke up tomorrow morning and you didn't have a family. You know, as if that would ever happen. I hope I never see any jerks again! Kevin is a little brat, but can you really blame yep. him considering how everyone just absolutely nope. hates him? You know, yeah, he's a, he's a brat, but like, on the scale of everyone in this house, he's like, the least brat. Look what you did, you little jerk. Yeah, the mi Mr. I have negative money in my bank account. So I really, really wish that Brooks was here for this because he would have had a perfect testimony about what's about to happen here. In his English class in junior year, there was someone who gave a speech about how old movies suck and new movies are the only good ones. And the key example they used to prove this point was Home Alone. And the fundamental piece of evidence they used to support that claim is that it's completely illogical that the parents ever would have forgotten their kid. So I would just like you all to pay very close attention to this next upcoming scene and see if there was anything happening that might justify why they would have left Kevin behind. And again, the statue just does not. No. This goddamn I feel so bad for this statue. You. It's been neglected more than Kevin. People just can't help but turn the steering wheel left 45 degrees and fucking run over that statue. <laughs> Typical movie. <laughs> and then, and then, and then uh, John Williams coming in here back when he knew how to make music. The first key component is that the power was knocked out from the storm, so they slept in, and that yeah. forced everybody to be extremely hectic, rushing around trying to get things packed. But also, they already established in the first scene how generally scatterbrained and chaotic the family's nature is. Th that, that opening scene establishes so much so fast. It establishes the relationship Kevin has with his family, the, just the general hectic nature of the family, and also dropping a little breadcrumbs for Harry's plans for later in the movie. But then you have the fact that Kevin was misbehaving the previous night, which led to him being isolated from the rest of the family in the attic, thus making him easier to forget, and the commotion of that misbehavior led to the ticket being thrown out. Then there's even more that's gonna happen here shortly. You th you'd think that surely, even with all that, they would at least do accounts to make sure that they have everybody. Yeah. Or literally anyone would notice, because with the amount of people they are. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Damn, if only that toque wasn't buy one, get one free sale. Have a good trip, bring me back some French. I wanted to let you know that your power is fixed, but the phone lines are a mess. I think my bell a couple of days to patch them up, especially around the holidays. So the phone lines are down, and they had someone else there to throw off the count. Yeah, you could argue that they should have recounted, but uh, there's no reason for them to recount. No. Heather, you count heads. Eleven, including me. Five boys, six girls, four parents, two drivers, and a partridge in a pear tree. What you could argue is the convenience of that one kid there, but, you know, inciting incident. I mean, so yeah, you, you can say it's inconvenient that the power was knocked out and the kid wandered across the street, and it certainly is, but that falls under the category of what you said, an inciting incident. It's the thing that propels us into the story, and then the rest of it runs based on cause and effect, but to say that it's completely... Yeah, if it, did, if it didn't run on cause and effect, I would be a lot more bothered, but, you know, good faith. <laughs> but to say that it's completely unreasonable for the parents to have forgotten their kid is to ignore everything that was set up in the beginning of this movie to establish why 
why that would have ever happened. But su- but surely they would notice it here, right? They're not uh, no, because they're not sitting together. Yeah, they'll they'll just be like, uh. And even now, if you did realize it, there's not much you can do. But they still had to board, right? I assume they were together when they were boarding. So when they were boarding, they were rushing to the door. Yeah, they're rushing. They just they could have lost another kid and it wouldn't know. That's part of the hectic nature I was describing earlier. That this yeah, family but, is just yeah, their house could have been on fire. They wouldn't have given a shit. They had to get to the airport. They literally said that, like you were like full line so then he's like, yeah, yeah, bye. So they clearly wouldn't care. I also, I also really like that this these scenes use a bunch of wide shots to show how small Kevin is compared to the rest of the house and mm-hmm. how empty it is with uh, with no one else there. It's a lot more impressive direction and editing than you might expect from your average box standard Christmas movie. A- average children's Christmas movie. I mean, this is technically a kids movie, isn't it? It Even is. They said ass. I mean, it's it's certainly made so that kids can watch it, but also it's kind of terrifying from the perspective of a kid. Mm-hmm. Nah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I mean, leave it to Chris Columbus to direct something that is watchable for children but can still be terrifying. But this is not the first time he did this. Although it's probably this is before Harry Potter, obviously. Yeah, John Hughes and Christopher Columbus work well together on these two. And then John Hughes does not work well with whoever the fuck directed the third movie. In what class do they sit currently for the freaking flight? Just diamond diamond food. I believe they call that first class. Yeah, I guess. That must have been a a freaking fortune for like 11 people. Well, considering the family is incredibly rich, it stands to reason that they would have been able to afford it. Although, having said that, it seems like it's only the parents that are in first class, because, again, the kids aren't with them right now. Yeah, Uh, if you can afford to have like 50 children, then yeah, you probably have a lot of money. Also, I just checked IMDb. This is Chris Columbus's third ever movie he directed. Yeah, at least he has some company. Yeah, the spider. <laughs> the pet yeah, spider. spider's spider's gonna become best friend here. Oh dear, this is actually just a mess. <laughs> Casual noose. Oh, Chris Columbus did pixels. Oh, what? Oh yeah, Chris Columbus did do pixels, didn't he? Oh. I mean, I, I guess the moment you're paired up with Adam Sandler for comedy, I guess you're doomed to not make a good product. Oh, how the, the mighty thing, have The fallen. thing is, like, Adam, Sa- Adam Sandler is literally, like, shit in most of the movies he's in, but then there's just the occasional movie where he gives, like, an extremely good performance for no yeah, reason. most of the time he, does, he doesn't give a shit. It's just, like, tax write-off or whatever. They're just like, alright, throw, throw him um, into some really subpar, raunchy comedy at the end. Yeah, also, it's nice to see child actors who can actually act. Look at yeah. that. Yeah, also Macaulay nice. Culkin, if I recall correctly, he I know he was in Uncle Buck, and Uncle Uncle Buck came out like like a year or two before this movie, so it's nice to see that he got a starring role here. Yeah, and the nice thing about the way Kevin is portrayed is that he's just he's just a normal kid. He doesn't feel unnaturally erudite with his wording, so he's he, he's he's a kid who is about to embellish in the wish fulfillment of having the entire mansion of a house to himself. I made my family disappear, and you can clearly tell that that is exactly what this is. Yeah, to him. you know. You know, I mean, if I had this house, I'd also jump on the bed with shoes on while eating popcorn. <laughs> popcorn. Literally just run around, screaming. I've always wanted to run around the kitchen table. Let's go, baby! Yeah, but I can finally run around without having, like, parents yelling at any him. of the other ten people. Yeah, without knocking everyone down like fucking bowling pins. Oh, boy. <laughs> nice on! But if, if you want a movie with good child acting, the original Matilda movie. Oh. oh. I think I saw the original Matilda movie back in, like, school. I barely I... remember anything about it. Back in, like, grade two. You've unlocked some memories I'd rather not resurface, so I'm just gonna ignore that and move along with my life. Oh, God. Kevin's been home alone for, like, ten minutes. He's already got a gun. This will not end badly, I'm sure. He's already going insane. He's already lost it, guys. And the nice thing is that on top of just showing a kid having the time of his life in the absence of his parents, it's setting up the inner workings of the house for the end of the movie when all of this is going to be necessary. To make his final stand. Also, can we crowdfund a full movie of this? Like, holy shit, this is peak. It's the best fake movie to have ever fake movied. Actually, actually peak, dude. Angels with filthy souls needs to be made. A24, get on it. Also, maybe it's just because I don't like dessert, but that does not look appetizing to me at all. That oh, mel- no, I, I, I like ice there. cream. That, that, that's too much. That's like actually the diabetes any percent speed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly yellow no good keister off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. One, two, ten. So who, are, who are the actors in that scene, by the way? I need to know what else they've done. <laughs> if they've only been in movies, all they've, all they've done is this movie and the other fake movie. Like, what was it called? Angels with even filthier souls? Yes. To IMDb. Away. <laughs> Except for this time, you're not going there to escape from a shit movie. Uh, 
Okay, so in in my efforts to track down who uh, who played them in the are they the movie, uncredited? No, I there's there's a credit from a character in this movie whose whose title is shopper who tells Kevin which aisle fabric softener is in. I'm sorry, Dude, what? oh my god, <laughs> why, that was a, the biggest Oscar snub of 1991. Guys. <laughs> like that's a full thing in the credits. Yeah, well on on IMDb at least. Person who told Kevin what was in aisle 42 like didn't get any nominations. Like snub. Like even back then the Oscars were shit. Anyway, it's Ralph Foodie and Michael Guido, neither of whom have pictures. In fact, yeah, no. last movie was. Was Home Alone two or one of them was? Dang, what was what was our first movie? Home Alone one. Mickey one from nineteen sixty five. Also, oh, this God. shot. I'm sorry, this is really nitpicky, but, but they fucking cheated with this shot. Oh, they absolutely cheated. would go cheated. directly into that wall. It right into the fucking wall, dude. Oh, Game over. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Death, insta death, any percent. But then again, people survive bricks in this universe, so who am I to judge? How many kids do you think almost killed themselves trying to emulate this stair stunt? I would rather not think of a children graveyard right now, Trevor. <laughs> I, yeah, I, that the, yeah, no, very I lucky that that door <laughs> even opened at all. Well, it's not. I mean, opened. the door—the door was already open. That's not the. The door was. We literally saw him go outside. Unless he went like diagonally, which in which case you would exit the door diagonally too. So yeah, they cheated with that shot. Zero out of ten movie. Fuck even then, like movie. It, it had to be such a specific angle because if he went diagonally the whole way, he just hit the stairs. No, 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 no. Bottom. The way no, this sled, the sled has the same magnesis technology that magnetizes it to the statue. That's what's happening here. We're <laughs> just following the path to the. Statue. I'm, I'm lucky I lived in a one-story house because I, I 100. Oh, and also in a place where there are no snowboards or sleds or anything because I 100 would have wound up in the hospital if I if I tried to do that. Jesus. I've always okay, I've always lived in a, a two-story house, but my old house when I first saw this movie, my staircase it literally went down into a wall before a 90-degree turn, so I would have never attempted it. Oh, it's him, yeah. Also, has Daniel Stern been in anything since this? To IMDb, away! <laughs> the mystery musket tool. He's in a show called For All Mankind, a show called Shrill Manhattan, a lot of TV it looks like. Yeah, he, he definitely had plenty of work to do after Home Alone, I just don't know if it's anything you'd recognize. I have not heard of any of the things that you mentioned. Probably looking at some very fine jewelry. Crowbars up. <laughs> You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. So OJ, remember you said we needed a song to sing after Home Sweet Home Alone? No. No? Yes. No, he, he, he did not. There is no evidence. I have no recollection of this. Oh, uh, oh f- f- <laughs> I may or may have not said it, but who knows? There's no proof of anything. Hey, OJ. O- J- you said it, remember? Remember when you said it? I'm going to give you to the count of ten to sing your... <laughs> I'm going to give you to the... Yeah, God damn it! I'll pop your gut full of lead. The extra important thing when it, cu- it comes to Kevin's character is not only is he shown to just be a normal, crazy kid just having fun running around doing whatever he wants, but when it really comes down to it, he clearly has a good head on his shoulders because his first instinct is turn on all the lights, make people think that the house is occupied. I thought you said they were gone. Yeah, and I also like that they showed that he's a huge adrenaline junkie at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> The, is there the, anything John you know, Williams homo- can't do? Uh, Dial of Destiny. Yeah, I mean, so long as it doesn't start with die and end with tinny, then I guess. Yeah, as long as it doesn't start with die and end with L of Destiny, it's all good. <laughs> L, L of Destiny, that's the new name for it. <laughs> L, L of Destiny, it was Destiny to have that L. <laughs> the L of Density. Yeah, no, I think the Home Alone movies might have my favorite John Williams soundtracks. Like, it, it feels like Christmas music while also matching everything that's happening, it's great stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of things of John Williams taking classic Christmas tunes and re orchestrating them to fit the tone of the scenes is the the, the key yeah, example. Setting up the traps is a banger. Yes. I'm not afraid anymore. Boo. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Dum dum dum. It's <laughs> the Grinch so shows up. <laughs> the Grinch. <laughs> the Grinch shows up and he's like salty, just like my nuts. I'm so sorry for that guy. Well, have you considered looking less creepy? <laughs> yeah, he's just like. I will steal your soul <laughs> with my shovel. I have a son who's home alone. Our phones there are out of order. Okay, let me connect you with Family Crisis Center. No, it's not a Family Crisis. Isn't it though? Let me connect you with the police department. No, they just transferred me to you. Hyper on two. Hold on, please. Oh my God! What absolute incompetent moron! I mean, that's customer service for you. Yeah. It yeah, sure customer is. service. Then I have, have never had the displeasure of experiencing such incompetent freaking service. I have. That's very lucky on me. I <laughs> Pick up! Hey, it's you again. What was the issue again? Something about a child in danger or something? Open up, kid. It's just the police. I- I'm not gonna hurt you, kid. I just need you to, to-, to make sure that you're okay here. They bang- they- he just knocks on the door for 10 seconds. No one answers. Well- Oh my god. 
Guys, the statue is knocked over again. They, they didn't show, but yeah. if you look at the statue... <laughs> Fucking, yeah. I'm telling you, that statue is magnetic. The police officer, I mean, that is accurate police officer. And so here's the thing is, he could have said, like, hey, kid, open up, it's the police. I'm just here to check on you. But given that he just survived an attack from people who clearly weren't the police, I don't know that he has any reason to, just to actually believe them. Yeah. And he could have checked at the window, and then he would have at least known. Yeah, but, but it's he did. perfectly reasonable for him to be scared. Well, so he, he did look in, unless you mean Kevin checking the window, but... I don't know if you've ever been a yeah. kid in that situation, but your your fight or flight response is to just cower away and hide and hope for the best. That I said that's a thing he could have done, but it, I, what happened makes complete sense. That's <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm the police. Prove it. Okay. <laughs> Fires gun. Open up. As we know, robbers never have guns. No. Not not in kids movies, Trevor. Only 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 the kids only the kids have the guns. So I I probably missed this, but why were they going to Paris again? Probably family matters. On vacation. Vacation, oh, yeah. You know. OJ, OJ, a vacation. Right. Okay. Holiday vacation. As are the rest of the town. That's 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 why the, the cop was going around in the beginning, because everyone was going out of town as the holiday season is approaching. So they're checking. He was checking what the timing was for all the automatic lights so he'd know when it was safe to, which houses were safe to hit and which weren't. Ah! All right, box art incoming. It's also why the one of the family members, I don't know the names, there's too fucking many of them. When she was calling hmm. back, all she got was a bunch of answering machines because no one is actually home. They're all out on some kind of Christmas vacation. Yeah. Just name the family members off of like the, the seven dwarves. And then for the other like 23, you can, I don't know, name them off with like minions or something. All right, so I, I think uh, the shelf might go bye bye here. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You oh, say might, oh, might? Oh, oh. God. All right, so oh, the shelf, oh, the shelf goodness. is now, the shelf has now uh, overtaken the statue in terms of biggest tragedy so far. Why is his life saving? Hey, where, where that tarantula went? But, oh goodness, my life savings are, and, and a whole five dollars. You took my only money. Now I'm gonna starve. No, I gotta <laughs> starve. You could literally find Buzz's life savings in the fucking couch cushion. <laughs> You can have the scuba gear on. <laughs> you know you wanted a great cat burglars in the world, Marv? <laughs> Seeing Marv with scuba gear on, just knocking everything onto his bag with a crowbar, <laughs> it's amazing. Chuck, this is Peter McAllister again, and we're still in Paris. That guys. house we were at last night, was that the McAllisters? Yeah. Paris. You're right, they're gone. I knew they were. Silver tuna tonight. Just did that for a transition. Come on. Is this toothbrush approved by the American Dental Association? It doesn't say, hon. Can you please find out? Like, really, if it were your absolute goal. Yeah, you could make yourself look any more intimidating. I mean, hey, I mean, hey, to be fair, to be fair, Trevor, the old man didn't control the camera angle there. Or the music. But, but still. Yeah, he didn't start playing the music, and oh, he God. accidentally cut his hand, you know? Ugh. No. Okay, sometimes you get hand injuries when you bury bodies. I mean, you shovel the snow, so, you know, like, that. that's not a big thing. Yeah. He, he twitches. Hey, kid, what's the matter here? You know, I, I was just burying bodies. I mean, shoveling my snow. Yeah, keep staring at him, why don't you? He's like fucking Medusa. They're getting the entire mystery gang out to stop this boy from stealing their toothbrush. A single toothbrush. God, dude, their toothbrush is like gonna tank their stocks here. Hey! The police are like, oh no, not the toothbrush! <laughs> oh fuck, no, we gotta stop this shit. That's the special <laughs> toothbrush. I love the thought that the police officers do more work trying to stop a kid from stealing a fucking toothbrush than checking to see if a kid's okay when he's home alone and his family is in <laughs> Paris. <laughs> like, Our tax dollars uh, at work, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. All these tax dollars for some kid to outsmart a police officer trying to stop him from stealing a toothbrush. Like, you should have just known whether or not it was approved by the American Dental Association. We wouldn't be in this situation. Damn, he he's gonna feel that guilt on his shoulders for the rest of his life, too. But only for this, and nothing else that he does at any point. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no, no, nothing else. He's gonna be, his, yeah, the toothbrush is gonna wear on his conscience, because it was, like, literally the golden toothbrush. Indiana Jones and the, the store with the golden toothbrush. One of a guy in limited edition. Indiana Jones and the titular toothbrush. You did it again, didn't you? You left the water running, didn't you? What's wrong with you? Why do you do that? I told you not to do it. Harry, it's our calling card. Calling card. Their calling oh, card is the fucking, the entire house is flooded. The wet bandits. The wet bandits. <laughs> dude, dude, you, you know, you know that you don't want to have your children home alone when the fucking wet bandits are on the loose. We don't need that kind Don't tell me what to do, okay? I can do it if I want to. No, he's not a statue, so he's okay. If he were the statue walking, though, he'd be dead. <laughs> 
She just screams at the car. <laughs> Doesn't even move, just yells at the car. Tanny don't visit the funeral homes, little buddy. Okay, okay. Merry Christmas. Thank you. What you Dang, his gold his gold tooth that sparkles on command. And he, he knows enough to try to conceal uh -oh. his reaction to the best as he can, but also can't control his initial gut response of uh oh, this is this is not good. Wait, I saw that guy in Goodfellas. Uh oh. Isn't that the guy from Goodfellas? Oh god. You don't mind the the, the, the van <laughs> creeping up on you. I knew he looked at me weird. Why would he run? Why is he going faster? I don't know, maybe because he's on the road yeah. with a car. Why is he going faster approaching. while a car is Why is he going faster? Yeah, why is he going why is he going faster when I'm slowly approaching him with a mic? <laughs> maybe we're in the church. I'm not going in there. Me neither. Yeah, let's get out of here. He went to the one place he knew that they wouldn't go check inside. And even if they did check inside, he still took precautions to make sure he wasn't going to be where they thought he would. All with all with the intent of making sure they didn't know which house he came from. When those guys come back. I'll be ready. Look at that. Smart child. Smart child's being smart. Let's go. This scene is great. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Consider yeah, continuing the the putting way too much goddamn effort into everything. <laughs> like, look at this. The entire arts and crafts project. This guy would like pass an art college <laughs> with this shit, and he's just using it for five seconds to trick some burglars. Kevin's ingenuity at work once again. Like, actually, he's gonna make the next atomic bomb, dude. <laughs> like, look at this. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I like how they I set mean, up. I mean, it was. I also, I also love. The, yeah, they set up the <laughs> one random mannequin in the basement from earlier. They set he up just everything. Has a cardboard cut out. They, they set up the cardboard cutout of Michael Jordan. Like, everything was all set up. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the train. The fucking train. You're gonna go. Michael Jordan. It's hilarious. Dang, dude. He's also dancing on the rhythm. Oh, no. They're, they're like, what the actual fuck? Yeah, because if you take a closer look, you'll you'll notice pretty quickly that they're all on very rhythmic robotics yeah. movements. Yeah, but, but like no. you wouldn't want to you, you wouldn't want to stay there any longer than you that. have to. Well, the, well, yeah, I mean, because no one you would never immediately assume that someone has the ability to concoct an entire Disney attraction <laughs> in your living room based on the most rudimentary materials you find. So just the fact that there's anything there at all shows you that okay, something's not. We need to leave quickly. Um, parlez anglais. What is it? I mean, um, yeah, I'm qui parle anglais là. I am looking for my son. Do you know where he is? If you yell it, they'll, the, the classic, if you yell the words loud enough, they'll start to understand English. <laughs> so to understand the foreign language. You're not at all worried about Kevin. Why should I be? No, he's acted like a jerk once too many times, and this time he caught it in the butt. Dang, if that isn't the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, no, Kevin's too, way too much of a jerk. I'm worried that something might happen to him. No, for three reasons. A, I'm not that lucky. Two, we have smoke detectors. And D. A, two, and D. Nothing even remotely dangerous will ever happen, period. And once again, <laughs> move the statue! Oh no, he's, like, he's like, nothing dangerous will happen. I love the fact that since the last person that hit that was... Hit At it this point, it's gotta be part of their security. <laughs> when someone arrives that isn't us, they will 100% bump into this goddamn statue. Okay, this is hilarious because I'm pretty sure the last person to show up and hit the statue happened when Kevin was home alone. It was the police officer. So that means that Kevin had to go inside <laughs> and set up the statue again just for it to get knocked down. Leave it on a doorstep and get the hell out of here. <laughs> what? This is amazing. What? <laughs> oh, okay. And this guy, and this. How much do I owe you? <laughs> How much do I owe you? This is amazing. Just fast forward a little bit. It's great being able to watch this with with people who've never seen it before, so all the jokes are completely yeah. fresh. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no good keister off my property. Just does this for no fucking reason whatsoever. Just, just do it. Just to be a dick. Yeah, just because, just because he needs to. <laughs> Film theory. Is, is Kevin McAllister a psychopath? Jesus Christ. Actually, no, this is revenge for continually knocking over the statue that he has to keep fixing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he's all avenge you, statue man. This gal has offered us two first class tickets if we go fry. Plus a ring, a watch, a pocket translator, $500, the earrings, you love the earrings. Did she pay all of that? <laughs> Oh well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough ass to completely uproot your travel plans, but hard to say no in the face of so many valuables. I didn't mean it. If you come back, I'll never be a pain in the butt again. Until the next time I am, actually. Yeah, I won't be a jerk to anyone ever again, except Uncle Frank. Fuck that guy. And maybe Buzz. Wait, did they fix the... The, the don't, what? Don't say it. Uh, the electricity will will literally... Doesn't matter. These kind of alarms... OJ, 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 are you going to join me on this one or no? 
Are you joining me on well, this? Well, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what he was saying a second ago. And I said, is, did they reset the alarm? As in, re, re, re-time it? Because they were in a hurry, right? They wouldn't have been the ones to do it. Kevin would have been the one to do it because he's the one that's currently using that room. Fair enough. The snow, the the night. Ah! Yeah. You'll never learn. Even the spider's like, oh dear god. Oh wait, here it comes, we're gonna meet- Oh my god, yo, the Oscar-worthy performance! The, <laughs> snub, the biggest snub of the entire century! Dude, Martin oh, Scorsese okay. was right, dude. Cinema is dead ever since they didn't give the Oscar to this person. We're gonna meet Shopper who tells Kevin which aisle, fa which, <laughs> which aisle fabric softener is in. Alright, ready? This is- this is the Claude of Home Alone. Feels the entire show. Wait, is she not gonna tell him what aisle- but Wait, what, what? Uh, the- the Oscar-worthy performance is happening any second, guys. Trust me. She didn't- Tell him where the aisle was. <laughs> Wait, hold on a sec. I want my fucking money back. Oh, okay, okay. So it, it was it's a deleted scene. That's why it's not in the credits. Oh, okay. But the fact that it's even listed on IMDb as Shopper Who, with that long-ass title, that's probably why it was cut, so it didn't have enough room in the credits to fit all the words <laughs> in there. Kevin McAllister, Buzz, Megan, the parents, woman who tells Kevin where aisle 42 is. If there's one scene to exemplify Kevin's street smarts, it's this. You're all by yourself. Ma'am, I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Where's your mom? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and your sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? Uh, I can't tell you that. Why not? You're a stranger. <laughs> Wait, what? Did you expect him to actually to actually answer that question? Yeah, please tell me your exact address. <laughs> are you sure you can't tell me your social security number? <laughs> oh. So these bags are made out of litter. The bags are literally made out of like. Actual. You should have double bagged it, Kevin. Was your was this your first time shopping? Actually, yes, it is. <laughs> literally, never, is never had that happen to a bag. No bag I've had has been made out of like actual garbage. I mean, for for, for his first time shopping, he did. Get a lot, and also, he did a lot of well prepped work. Oh, there we go again. Hello, Kevin. <laughs> I just assumed that in the 90s, the material wasn't quite as strong as what we have today. Yeah. That was scarier than the entirety of any horror movie to be released in the last decade. Go well, check it out. Marv.exe has <laughs> stopped working temporarily. Tomorrow, get now! <laughs> Get the hell out of here. All right, Johnny. The amount of leverage you get out of this one movie is insane. God, dude, this movie, you got your bang for your buck. This movie's like literally like 30 seconds long, but no one cares. Dude, yeah, we need, we need, we need film theory. Is Kevin McAllister a sociopath? <laughs> oh, God. I'm going. One, two, ten. <laughs> When he did this stunt with the pizza delivery guy, he didn't need anything more than just the audio to fool him. But when it comes to dealing with actual robbers, he's not going to take any chances. He needs the explosions to be real to scare them away. Yeah, and, and yet again, he also jumps into the trash can. <laughs> Everyone just died. First instinct when they see gunfight, jump into trash can. I don't know who's in there, but somebody just got blown away. Huh? Somebody beat us to the job. They're in there. Let's wait and see who it is. Supposing a cop's finger was for a job. Wouldn't it be nice to have a face to go with their questions? These two work together so well. You have one just complete idiot, complete kids movie <laughs> villain, and then you have like actual crime drama guy. Actual reasonably intelligent criminal. I also love yeah. that they, they hold on the shot of Marv just processing the information. <laughs> yeah. I've been from Chicago to Paris to Dallas to... Where the hell am I? <laughs> Where am I? Scranton. What? I don't even know what a Scranton is. Allow me to introduce myself. Gus Polinski. Another Gus. What is it with Gus characters and wearing yellow? Yeah. I mean, that's another character there with yellow. No. Uh, what? That? What? No. That, that, I'll just ignore it. <laughs> I had a fairly big hits for us, you know, in the early 70s, you know? <laughs> yeah, we sold about 623 copies. She's like, why should I give a single shit about this exactly? The, uh, the point, get to it. Dude, dude, the Sheboygans are like, If you have to get to Chicago, we'll, we'll gladly drive you. It's on the way to Milwaukee. You just gotta hop into the van of the polka guys, mm. you know? Step like, into, yeah, step into my van, please. I mean, I, I, welcome to my van, Master Chief. But yeah, she did say she would literally sell her soul to the devil himself. I love, uh, you, even the way they sleep is just like, Harry just ca normal sleeping. Well, Marv is just sitting there like, actually, it looks like he's like high. Whoa, dude, like that snake guy gave me some like 
some stuff. Game by a kindergarten. He's like blitzed out of his mind. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking yeah. about. I also like that he's proud of the fact that they're getting outsmarted by a kindergartner. It's like, is that something <laughs> to be triumphantly smiling about? I feel like you should be quite embarrassed by this turn of events. They're like, oh yeah, we got we got outsmarted by a five-year-old ten times. He's conned you at least three separate times by this point. Dad, can you come here and help me? Remember that kid we saw the other day? He lives here. Kids there, the parents gotta be. He's home alone. He said the oh. name. Ah. Roll credits. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah, already he's home alone. said that before yeah. this point. Yeah. Uh, but that way, it was like more like of a moment. He's home alone. Boom. The reason we started working this block in the first place. Ever since I laid eyes on that house, I wanted it. Get a bite to eat. We'll come back about nine o'clock. It's dark then. Kids are scared of the dark. You're afraid of the dark too, Mark. You know you. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're afraid of the dark. No, you're <laughs> afraid of the dark. I don't think any of the Home Alone villains after this point come anywhere close to matching the chemistry that Harry and Marv do. <laughs> oh, don't you don't you know the chemistry of the of the Harry or whoever the hell and Marv from Home Alone Four? So much chemistry there. <sighs> I can't. Why did I agree to watch more than just the first two? That's a good question. We can still no we can still cancel that plan. I guess you could say it's a Christmas miracle. Oh, is that what you call this? A miracle? Yeah. <laughs> I, I sure do, Trevor. I sure do. It's a, it's a miracle in the same thing of Professor Leighton in the miracle mask. Dang, the goth elf shows up. Damn, hold on! <laughs> bye bye, cigarette be gone. No, you're not the real Santa Claus. What makes you say that? Out of curiosity. I'm old enough to know how it works. I'd like you to give him a message. I'm Kevin McAllister. Instead of presents this year, I just want my family back. What do you even do with this information? Like, uh... I thought you were gonna ask me for, like, a, a new bike or something. I love- I, I really love that, and if he has time, Uncle Frank. <laughs> if he- I know he has a busy schedule, so if he can't get to Uncle Frank, I'm not gonna cry over it. Everybody sees Santa's gotta get something. Here, pull out your little paw there. There you go. Honestly, Mall Santa is the most underrated character in the movie. <laughs> yeah, where's Mall Santa's credits? The guy who gives Kevin three Tic Tacs. Come on. Okay, so somewhere in my memories and setting up the traps for fighting for best song in the soundtrack. Yeah, the music has, has been very good. It's beautiful. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's to be expected from John Williams. Exactly. Yeah, no, because oh. John Williams puts out nothing but bangers. That's still what I expect of him. When he doesn't do it, it's when we notice. <laughs> that being said, it is kind of extra impressive in this case because it's mostly revolving around pre-established Christmas melodies. And what he's able to do with them is unparalleled. <laughs> Only half of that choir is able to see the conductor. Yeah, also, why why is the choir not have any candle drumstick? Uh, I'm really disappointed. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, then. <laughs> and Gugonic's like, what the fuck? You'll, no, you'll see. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. No, it's not, but it, it, it we'll, we'll get to it. it it's kind of dumb, but like, eh. Oh no, it's Shovel Knight. Oh my god. Hey, kid, I have a disorder that makes me only able to stare at people for long periods of time. Whenever I look at someone, I have no choice but to look at them for five minutes. Kevin's like, yep, I'm dying tonight. Oh, there he is. Hello. Merry Christmas. He speaks! <laughs> Look at that. Look at what camera angles can do. Um, an important thing about the scene is that he looked around the church to make sure they would have a quiet moment to discuss this. And there was no one else that could impede on this in any way. So he felt secure in opening up to Kevin. Who plays him, actually? I'm so glad I never closed IMDb. Like, geez, I don't think I've ever had to use it this much for commentary. <laughs> IMDb is like the Bible of Home Alone. <laughs> Robert's Blossom. I'm in kind of a pain lately. I said some things I shouldn't have. I'm kind of upset about it because I really like my family. Even though sometimes I say I don't. Sometimes I even think I don't. Do you get that? I think so. How you feel about your family is a complicated thing. You want to know the real reason why I'm here right now? I came to hear my granddaughter sing. Before you and your family moved on the block, I had an argument with my son. We lost our tempers, and I said I didn't care to see him anymore. You miss him? Why don't you call him? What if he won't talk to me? At least you'll know. Then you could stop worrying about it, and he won't have to be afraid anymore. I don't care how mad I was. I talked to my dad. Just give it a shot. For your granddaughter, anyway. I'm sure she misses you. You better run along home where you belong. 
You think about what I said. What about you? You and your son. We'll see what happens. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And with the strike of the bell, the peak of Home Alone is now upon us. Oh, oh no, it's the macaroni and cheese time, guys. <laughs> Brilliant music. Instantly, yeah. as soon as that bell strikes, you know that things are about to get serious. And I also like the, the yeah, lights Oh no, turning. everyone's lights are magically yeah. turning on. Well, not necessarily magically. They already established that that would happen in that yeah. order. Yeah. This is my house. I have to defend it. All right, quick, let's pull out the, the video schedule here. The battle plan. Battle plan. <laughs> Let's go. This is, this is trap number one. The trip over random shit thing trap. <laughs> the, the, the trip over random shit thing you're gonna be quite accustomed to by the end of this series. Well, yeah, because the at the beginning, the, the one of the first scenes in the movie was them talking about how Kevin's aunt almost broke her neck tripping on the micro machines. I got something for you to do. You can pick up those micro machines that are all over in there. Leslie stepped on one and almost broke her neck. A lot of things that, that, that are about to happen in this climax were set up the, the whole yeah. time as the movie goes on. Hey, look, it's the random nail in this there is from a quiet mm -hmm. place zip line with a, a coat hanger and i also like that they specifically show how everything is being constructed and it's made entirely out of just things that you would find lying around your house i i'm just i'm just very curious how many people have had their child do this and then just ruin their house well, ruin their house slash try to get someone killed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's more important. I'd say similar to the stair sled trick, more kids than you than you'd hope would be the answer to that question. Yeah. yeah. And also here's the 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 biggest booby trap, the eating macaroni and cheese trap. It just had it's all going away. We'll go to the back door. Maybe he'll let us in. You never know. Yeah. He's a kid. Kids are stupid. Oh really? <laughs> kids are stupid, huh? Hmm. By and large, yes. Bless this microwave. Dude. Yeah, but you know, it's ironic that he is saying that. Did, did he nine. have two forks? Did he have? Did he have two forks? Are there are there two forks there? Rich families and whatnot. Yeah, rich families use two forks. They use them as chopsticks. Oh god, is that going to be murder? <laughs> oh boy. I mean, they're not. They're invincible, OJ. You need to know this. They are actually indestructible. <laughs> they're, they're about as they're about as indestructible as that statue out front. Every time they get knocked down, they always come back up for uh, for more. Yeah, come on, kid, open up. It's Santa Claus. <laughs> Good thing this guy uh, thinks that kids are stupid because uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think he's gonna be having kids anytime in the near future. Oh. And open the door. <laughs> Game over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got shot in his pants. He's trying so hard not to swear. He's using his life force to not <laughs> swear right now. Big, big, big brain Marv over here. <laughs> I mean, his, I don't think his brain is gonna be so big after this. And they say his brain shrunk three sizes that day. <laughs> yes. The little jerk is armed! Oh, you don't say. His brain is literally as big as one of those pellets. <laughs> Actually, this is the most stupid thing he has done so far. <laughs> I, I would just rewatch this entire shit like 50 times back to back. <laughs> oh, God. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Just... I didn't need my spine anyway. <laughs> as if he did as if he already didn't have any spine. Uh I love like the, the timing of of all of these shots the editing is pretty yeah, really good. And all well, of the... these profile pictures. There's like a million frames here that are like perfect profile Ow. pictures. <laughs> the comedic timing is actual perfection. Just on the actors, on the editors, <laughs> all of it. He waits like ten seconds to say ow. He just falls down. <laughs> just awkward silence for ten seconds. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we call adding insult to injury. Good measure. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional, it just happens as well. Climbing the <laughs> stairs, challenge level 100. The oh final my boss, god. The staircase. The staircase <laughs> is literally the final boss, dude. You're actually going to have damage on your head. Yeah, no, that's not that's not the stairway to heaven. That's the stairway to hell. Well, that would it wouldn't even be the road to hell, because the road to hell is filled with good intentions. They don't even have that. All this effort to try to break down the door here. So remember that laundry shoot from the beginning when Kevin was shooting the toys? Mm -hmm. Uh well. Uh, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ow. I guess well I guess you could say that he is Iron Man. Oh. That's gonna leave a mark. Uh, the ODR. Permanent damage. But remember, the villain from Dial of Destiny is totally fine. 
God, this railing is doing a lot of heavy lifting. I wonder if he's gonna need a hand after this. Oh, guys, w Wobbles just got back. Should we should we bring him in here for the final? Sure. Oh God, what is that? Okay, well, let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause. Okay. I, uh, before uh, yes, we can that, see, that's you. no oh, game in really is very festive. Waffles, give use the picture that I gave you. It's very festive. Oh wait, you got me a picture? Yes. I'll send it again to make it as easy as possible for you. I'll send it again. Oh, that's actually uh, pretty nice. Uh, Thank square. you. Uh, it's Yet not as square. Always... Yeah. All right, Waffles. You know what the best part is? I anticipated that, and here you go. Here's your square. Take it. You want the square? There it is. Now shut up. Yeah, I got my square. <laughs> and you had put on the damn picture. Trevor may hate anime, but he's a goddamn Fucking anime squares. villain with how many steps ahead of you he is. <laughs> Don't underestimate Trevor's preparations. The square is actually the worst shape. I've actually been like 50 steps ahead of you the whole time. I had the square the whole time because you're a square waffle. Jingle waffles. bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Okay, let, let's sync to 120.33. Here, I'll, I'll screenshot my. Oh no. Oh god, what have I done? Oh my. What? That oh no, no, what? what have you, have <laughs> what you moved up Home Sweet Home Alone? Because you might get a computer virus. So I, uh, I discovered a new trick. Apparently, I, I accidentally hit the 360 degree button, and now the movie is in 360 degree, and it looks... Horrible. Oh my! Hey, it, it looks, it looks experience like a, the, a, 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 the movie how it was meant to be. It looks like it's a, a, yeah. The movie is looks like it's <laughs> now. Oh god! What the fuck happened here? Hold on, I need this to load. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Why would you? Why would you? I mean, Trevor, there are some shots in movies I want to see in three sixty degrees now. In case you wanted every. <laughs> <laughs> Therapist, therapist, mega mind Joe Pesci isn't real. He can't oh my god. mega mind Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Trevor, from now on, you're recording the entire rest of the commentary like that, dude. No. Every every single movie we're watching like oh that now. God. Holy shit, that is peak. <laughs> that is actually fucking peak. You're watching every movie on my list in 360 mode. No. Come on, Come on you gotta watch Perfect Blue in 360 degrees. Oh, That's fuck off. Happening. No, Jesus. That's how it was meant to be watched. <laughs> Trevor, no, no, fuck sub versus dub debate. 360 degrees is how you watch anime, okay? I don't give a shit. All those non- All those 180 degree enjoyers are all uncultured swine. Oh wait, Trevor, Trevor, I just had a thought. When you watched the Barbie movie, when did you go to a 360 degree theater? Shut up! Oh, that's why you didn't like it. No wonder. Oh, we found, <laughs> we've solved it. It's, 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 it's everything. That that makes perfect sense. Cover, you better have recorded that 360 degree footage. I did. Don't don't you don't you worry. I did. Don't you worry. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Dude, there's like the frames in this are there's so many good frames. I need to see all of them in 360 <laughs> degrees. Like a mega mind Joe Pesci. Perfection. <laughs> okay, on go. Three, two, one, go. That M stands for Mamma Mia. That's what should have happened with Luigi in the end of the movie. Well, I guess you could say that that snow really came in handy. Uh, also, what, what was that on the door, actually? It was burning. <laughs> Damn. It's, at least it's better than having the golden arches on your hand. <laughs> the shoes. I mean, he didn't choose to be in this situation. <laughs> Everyone's laughing at my jokes, guys. Oh, this th this must hurt. You have no idea. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> live, live, live footage of A Quiet Place. A Quiet Place was inspired by Home Alone. The voice crack when he's like, ah, 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 ah. This guy just needs to shoot himself with the Ant-Man blaster and go through the doggy door. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> every doorknob, he's like, he's like, he's like, ah, come on. I also like how every door has a different trap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've seen this somewhere. Well, why did he stay still stand there? He just, he, I, I mean, I, he always was a bit of a hothead. Oh my god, the setting. <laughs> I love how every door has a different trap so they never know what to expect no matter which way they go in. Yeah, every single- there's like a million doors oh and windows God. too. Every single door and window is gonna have a different trap in it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened there, brother? He slipped. He slipped for, he slipped for the ice again. Yeah, because Kevin poured water on the steps and because it's so cold out, it just froze instantly. He just becomes charging Chuck, barefoot through the snow. Yeah, that's a great way to get hypothermia. Yeah, he's gonna have ice cube shoes. So you'd think by this point, after everything that happened, he, he'd think yeah. to, to watch where he steps. That's bait. It's too late for you, kid. We're already in the house. We're gonna get you. Okay, come and get me. <laughs> 
the plastic wrap trap. There's two distractions. <laughs> I love how this trap is literally just making him look like a chicken. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the whole trap. It's just a minor nuisance. <laughs> Completely cosmetic change. He's breaking. He's going to break a snack. If only he had the common sense yeah, to but, to oh, oh, him oh. down. <laughs> You think he would have learned uh, after the after nail? What happened? Yeah, after the nail. I love how they, they went from "I'm coming for you, kid" to "I'm going to fucking murder this kid." <laughs> the hell was that? That was me. Why the hell did you take your shoes off? Why the hell are you dressed like a chicken? <laughs> 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 did they just, the family reunion be like? Get me, <laughs> morons! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and then they break their back on some toys. All it, it's like a bull charging a cave. All they see is red. They don't look down at any point. Yeah, yeah no, their eyes—they're like the old oh man. Oh my god! They're constantly homing attack, targeting the kid. Oh god! Paint by numbers. <laughs> Jesus. Heads up, no, his head's actually down. Here's round two. Hey. <laughs> Interesting. Two. <laughs> two paint cans destroying your brain cells. Ha ha ha! Could I? You could sue this kid. Could I? Could I? No, you Probably couldn't. Not. No, you couldn't sue him. Could yeah, I'm property, yeah, I'm a burglar. Yeah, I'm a I'm a burglar. Yeah, he tried to kill me when I broke into his house. Well, here's the thing. I, th I think there's actually a case about this with a shotgun booby trap where it, it was actually argued in court whether they were justified in suing, even though they intended to rob the place with a, a booby trap that had been specifically set up like Home Alone. I don't remember what the results of the case were, but I know I watched a video about it. It was really interesting, so I'll probably link that. Oh, my house is being robbed. And now we, now the police are gonna do finally do something. This movie, they get their moment, the end game moment. Now that he's, it sounds like an adult. Like the police give a shit. There he is! Random. He does a flip. Uh oh. This part is that uh, he has to like come up with some shit on the spot here. Tarantula to the rescue! And they, yeah, they... Good thing he broke that shelf. The tarantula is scared. Yeah. The amount of shots in this movie that serve to constantly remind you that that spider exists for one grand payoff in the finale. <laughs> Literally, we need to see it in 360 degrees, Trevor. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Sm sm smack it with the. The thing is, uh, for when they filmed this, he had to actually just like dub over the screen because the spider would get scared and run away. Oh my god, he's actually going for it. Hold still, hold still, hold still. I just need to just beat your heart out of your chest here, really quick. Don't mind. <laughs> Don't move. Imagine you wake up from tripping and you see Marv ahead of above you, just like. Don't move with the crowbar. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's a new rib cage. Where is it? Yeah, never mind. I just get. <laughs> how do you like it, huh? You jerk. I like how he just, he just broke something with the crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> the, the he just like the glass shattering sound effect. Da, 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 da. Oh, Ow. That was more action than any of the four or fifth Indiana Jones movies. Maybe committed suicide. Oh my Jesus! Maybe he committed suicide. <laughs> Kids movie, guys. Did Marv one second would be like saying some goofy shit? Next second, maybe he committed suicide. Well, this movie is rated PG, so that there's a little bit of leeway. Cops! He's not calling a from a treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> from a treehouse? And look at that. He's actually competent. He doesn't try to do it with his bare hands because, as anyone knows, then uh, you burn. I don't know. If I... Literally burn them. You no, he's not sliding. He's not sliding. They're not, like they're like shimmying yeah, no. across. Yeah, they're shimmying across. Yeah, yeah. They're not gonna burn it's their not hands not like climbing works. across. No, no, no. I said, I said, I literally said that they were competent because they put something around their hands. Because as anyone knows, you burn them. Yeah. Yeah, but no, he's not, not what sliding. Are you down no, the they're not sliding down. The, it doesn't. Th their hands wouldn't burn by climbing across. Oh the gods! Road. Hey guys, look at my new toy. <laughs> Oh, go back! Oh. He go back! He's like the fuck go back <laughs> meme with the keyboard. Yeah. Fuck, go back. You're not go making back. that in time. Goodbye. <laughs> Ow. Oh god. <laughs> so are they dead yet? Uh, <laughs> they're just stargazing. I love that they sit there on the shot for a while, just them to look at each other like they're just, what? They're just processing yeah, yeah, like this kid is the devil himself. The timing is perfect. Yeah, when they when they saw him with the pliers, they were like, fuck go back, fuck go back. Go back. Is he going to call the old man? Oh, dude, they're gonna get arrested looking like this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He wants us to follow him. I got a better idea. Come on. Brain mode activated. Yeah, they finally, they finally wisened up like, wait, maybe we shouldn't follow him exactly where yeah, he no, wants I love, us to I love go. Them, them getting the shit beaten out of them made them activate oh, their brain. Oh, right. You did laugh the water. The wet bandits. The <laughs> swimming pool house. Hiya, pal. We outsmarted you this time. Get him. Fuck, go back. Now Kevin's like, fuck, go back. Welp. Now Marv actually looks intimidating. Yeah, now that he's been mangled to hell. Oh. Yeah, uh-oh, oh, oh no, here comes Shovel Knight. <laughs> he's unleashing his inner bloodlust. <laughs> oh! oh! Come on. Let's get 
you home. I love that the shovel is what finally knocks them out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shovel, like this shovel has been they through some shit ever. They had one HP at this point. <laughs> you need to understand this. This shovel is strong enough to bury bodies. I mean, shovel snow. So. Well, see, that, that's the thing is that like after sustaining all that damage, you, you can easily argue that adrenaline is what's powering them through all their injuries, and then yeah. they just they, now that the, now that it calmed down somewhat, they finally succumb to it. Uh oh! Oh wow, this is great. He's gonna have his popcorn. That would have been great if he had yep. if he had popcorn because because the first thing he did when he was home alone was he was bouncing on the bed with popcorn. If he also had popcorn going here. Finally, the cops are competent now. Look at that. In fairness, they were handed to them on a silver platter. Like, they couldn't have... Yeah. You have to be uniquely incompetent to screw this up when they were both unconscious on the floor. Have yourself a merry little... Have yourself a merry Christmas starts playing. <laughs> imagine, imagine being Joe Pesci right now. You look and see the kid just, like, smiling while waving at you. <laughs> like, you've been bandits for this entire time, but that kid is what puts you away. Can he finally eat the macaroni and cheese i don't think so i think i think that the other glass of milk is like spoiled by this point then he's gonna just fill the stockings with their organs wait what i'm a bad parent yes <laughs> no, no yeah oh my no. god holy shit holy shit has the mother said something truthful in this movie oh she she i mean the second she notices she tried to do everything to come back unfortunately that was kind of hard <laughs> Well, yes, but it's just that it's a wake-up event to sort of put a mirror up to you after everything that had happened before this point that led to this situation in the first place. John Candy got taken away from us way too early. The snow appeared. The statue, he put the statue back up again. Good kid. Mom? 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 But nobody came. Everybody else. Baby, they couldn't come. They wanted to so much. No, I didn't fall asleep in that. <laughs> Wait, how? What? They probably got on another flight. The end game moment. Da, 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 da. How are they? How are they not? Give it that, a couple seconds. That's close to her. Wait a minute. How did you guys get home? Oh, he took the morning flight. Remember the one you didn't want to wait for? <laughs> well, someone has to find an open store. We don't even have milk here. I went shopping yesterday. I got the milk, eggs, and fabric softener. Hey, hey, the fabric softener! <laughs> See, it wasn't totally cut out of the movie. What else did you do while we were away? Hmm. <laughs> What else do you do while we were away? Well, I kind of almost murdered two <laughs> adults, just goofing around, his awkward laugh. But the important thing is nothing was taken from the house. We were not, in fact, robbed. We were almost robbed. We were, we were almost robbed of two, uh, lives. He couldn't completely clean up his mess. Yeah, this, yeah he, I like the, I like the <laughs> thought. I like the thought that he cleaned up all the cars around it, but he just left the tooth there just so the dad can find it. And know that something else went on. Oh, just a little Christmas gift. I used Buzz's life savings to afford it. It's like the calling card of my victim. Kevin! What did you do to my room? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the story of where now Buzz is gonna have a bigger body count. <laughs> then Kevin Buzz becomes the shovel the shovel knight. Yeah, Buzz starts murdering him now. What a what a good ending. And that's the first oh, home. What alone. a great film, dude. And you are absolutely right. It could have ended here right now and nothing would have been wrong at all. Speaking of uh of Harry Potter, someone there was named Mark Radcliffe. Oh really? How very interesting. Anyway, yeah, that's a great film. It's just such a wholesome Christmas movie that will never, will never age. Yeah, it's all thanks to the the woman that tells Kevin where aisle 42 is like that. Without her, this movie would be shit. Her contributions were so powerful, they had to cut it out of the film to make sure it didn't <laughs> blow too many people away. Yeah, yeah, me, me when uh, the woman who tells Kevin where uh, aisle 42 is finally shows up in Home Alone. So... What do we think? I really liked it. Just as good as I remember it being. <laughs> Consider me pleasantly surprised. And how about Waffles, who only saw like 20 minutes of it? Listen, alright, I've seen the movie. Oh, how What do know? you think of the ending of Home Alone? It, it isn't that big video, alright. So, like, like, the movie, I, the kid like, the kid like killed, like, pretty much killed those people, actually, um, yeah. And then like, I, honestly, I don't, I think they had the set, so what really happened, calling the cops, I'm pretty sure, like, 
They actually just died and Shuffle Man buried them. Take a shot every time Waffles said like there. Great contribution to the commentary, Waffles. Yeah, yeah, Waffles. Do you cry out maple syrup at the ending? Maple syrup? Because you're Did a waffle. Did you cry, maple syrup? He doesn't even know he's a waffle. <laughs> Disgrace. He forgot. He both thinks he's a pancake. Oh, like, if I cry out maple syrup, I thought you said, like, you were meaning, like, scream maple syrup. What? Waffles. Waffles, why are you here? <laughs> Who put you here? We paused peak fiction for you, Waffles. And we you guys understand. discovered the 360 function. That is true. That is true. Okay, that's the contribution. That's the contribution of the commentary. All right, Waffles, you're allowed in the commentary. You'll exactly. Be the I okay. hope you guys discovered You've made it to the thumbnail. You can stick around for Home Alone, too. Yeah, Waffles somehow t uh, turned <laughs> the situation into same. Good ending. <laughs> turnabout waffles. Yeah. Turnabout, turnabout syrup. But I think you guys are overlooking a major problem with this movie. Why doesn't Kevin just call the police instead of trying to actively torture both robbers? Um, because he's a psychopath and he wanted to kill them? Wait, wait, hold on. He did. He, he, wait, 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 wait. He did call the police. He did. However, why? He why did. would he not have just yeah. called the police out of the gate? Why would you call the police when you can nearly murder two guys in the goofiest ways imaginable? Of course, I wouldn't call the police. Fuck it. If I had the power to summon giant set, uh, settings with Disney park attractions at my will, I am not calling the fucking police. Especially when the police literally were like, "Oh, he's not even home." He's not, he's not even there. I just knocked a couple times and no one answered. He must not, he's not even there. Oh, also because they were see, looking for him. Because the police are so competent in this universe. Yeah, so many people will use the fact that Kevin didn't call the police as an attempt to frame him as a psychopath who just wanted to torture the robbers and nothing else. No, but, but it's the truth. Waffles. Waffles, I swear to God. So, there's a, there's a couple things shown throughout the movie that establish why that is not a course of action he should have taken. So some people will reference the fact that the phone lines were down, but obviously that's not an obstacle he would have had to overcome because as at some point they get fixed due to Kevin having the ability to order a pizza and the wet bandits being able to overhear on the answering machine at the neighbor's house the call that Kevin's dad made to the house. So at a certain point, the phone lines were fixed. So that doesn't justify it. However, as OJ pointed out, Kevin stole a toothbrush. And while it probably means basically nothing to the store in question, and they forgot about it as soon as it happened, from the perspective of a kid, you've just stolen something from the store, and he labels himself as a criminal, so he, he wouldn't want to get the police involved out of the gate for that very reason. And on top of that, the cop that showed up to his house on the first night, the beginning of the movie, wound up being a robber in disguise. So any, any kid would make the logical connection that the cops might be in on it and wouldn't be able to trust them. Now then, it then breaks the question of, with all those pieces in place, why does he then call the cops eventually anyway? I assume his plan was him being outside of the house when the police arrived. That, that's why the, the whole... Yeah, he's a, yeah he's in the house too. Yeah, when they yeah when they show up, he's not even out there. Well, so the, the important thing to note is that when he does call the police, he disguises his voice in an attempt to conceal his identity, and he sends them to the neighbor's house so it's in no way connected to him. My well, address is 656 Lincoln Boulevard. My name's Murphy. Kevin McAllister, 671 Lincoln Boulevard. Th that still begs the question of why wait until after they already invaded the house to call the police. Well, in an ideal world, the robbers would have been scared off by any one of the traps. You you'd think that a reasonable person would have run the <laughs> fuck away after the first BB pellet or the flamethrower yeah, or the, anything. The second, yeah, the second their head uh, disappears, that's when you go. So ideally, yeah. he doesn't have to get the police involved at all, and they'll just be scared away by any no, any one of his numerous traps. But also... He needs to get the robbers into the neighbor's house for this stunt to work in the first place. Because if he, if he calls the cops on the neighbors and then runs into the neighbor's house like, Hey, come follow me. They have no reason to care. Because what they want is the goods inside the McAllister's house. And they don't actually care that much about Kevin out of the gate. They just want... They want to be able to rob a house of that level of wealth. But then each trap pisses them off more and more, ensuring that they care enough about Kevin to the point where they care more about chasing Kevin and getting vengeance on him for everything that he did to them than actually robbing the house. Because when Kevin flees to the neighbor's house, they could have just turned around, robbed the McAllister's blind, and then left. There was, at that point, there was nothing else stopping them. They had a complete reign of the house. But they don't because they want revenge against Kevin, and that's what Kevin's ultimate plan was. 
He, he believed that the only way he could have defended his home from the intruders was because his family was nowhere to be found, the cops were either useless or corrupt, and he thought he was a criminal. So this was the only plan he had to be able to capture them with the help of the police. In worst case scenario, best case scenario, they just run away. Yeah, and, and specifically, he ran to the house that the that old man Marley was in. They, they also make sure to set that up in the church when he says, You live next to me, don't you? And the reason why I've, I've taken so much time to, to outline this is because every single goddamn year on Twitter, someone will inevitably ask this question of why didn't he call the police? Okay, this kid's a really clever kid, right? Yeah. But, uh, like, why, he's, like, these guys are about to break in. Why doesn't he just call the cops? I mean, like, he makes a master plan and he uses micro machines, but, like, for real, there's landlines. I mean, there's no cell phones, but still. I think that's the only, I think that's, that's, a, that's an enormous plot hole. <laughs> So it's not yeah, totally not. Totally no, Trevor, we all we it. all know we all know that the real reason you're spending so much time debunking all of the bullshit about Home Alone is because <laughs> of that one guy at your school. Alright, Trevor, we know. The 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 one guy at your school. Who the fuck is you, this you, one you, guy at school? Him. Oh, it's a long story. It's actually a pretty short story. Someone in Brooks's English class gave a speech about how old movies suck and new movies are great. And the example they used to prove the point was Home Alone. First of all, I didn't actually hear the speech. I only heard about it through Brooks because I wasn't in his English class. Of what he told me, his he was exclusively focused on the beginning where the parents leave the kids behind, believing that to be completely impossible for that to have ever happened. I don't think he ever actually mentioned anything to do with the ending. If, if they gave him a bit more time, he would have started going off on the ending too, I assure you. Unless he didn't <laughs> even make it that far into the movie, he just put it down after the opening. When we watch Home Alone 2, I'll, I'll ask him for the specifics of what it was, because he was he actually heard the speech. I didn't. I, I just heard about it through him. Like, he, the movie was just so bad, he couldn't handle like going past the intro. That's it. Is that all the thoughts in Home Alone 1? I think, unless anything else, anyone has anything else they want to say about first Home Alone? No, it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I'll probably... Start watching it every Christmas now. And and so Gunning's first Christmas ritual has actually been erased. God, every ritual, dude. Our, my ritual is that every year my dad would fucking put on Groundhog Day on Groundhog Day. Every year. Every single one year he forgot to do it or we didn't have time or whatever. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, that's like, that's a great movie, but like every year watching it is like, okay, come on. Because what's great about Home Alone is that the premise of it is rooted in some very, very common occurrences and thoughts that a kid would have. Like, what if I had no parents to boss me around? What if I had complete, unrestricted reign of the house to do literally whatever I wanted to? So there's a bit of wish fulfillment there, but also the flip side of that is, what if something dangerous were to happen and my parents were nowhere to be found? And that's just what this movie takes full advantage of, both of those quantities. It gives you the outrageous value battle against the wet bandits as the climax and then it also gives you a quite moving story of just Kevin confronting the reality of what his what he actually thinks of his family and realizing he doesn't really hate them as much as he thought he did because the honeymoon phase of just running around doing whatever doesn't quite last as long as he expected it to and in the, in cuz in the moment he has to wrestle with the wet bandits terrorizing his house and this the reality that comes about of him not having his family around to protect him. And then he also meets old man Marley, who he essentially sees a version of his future where he's estranged from his family. Because that's what that's what old man Marley's purpose is to the story. It's just uh, an, an eventual reality that might happen if he can't repair the connections with his family even over the even no matter what the disagreement might be seeing, which is why he tries to make that connection work again for him as well and seeing him in the church and seeing what becomes of him leads him to essentially inverting his beliefs at the beginning of the film and encouraging him to go take the leap to to mend that bridge that he didn't think he wanted to originally and it's the last bit of motivation kevin needs to actually stand his ground when previously, because when, when they first said they were going to come back and they realized that he was home alone, he felt very, very lost and hopeless, which is why he ran to church at, at, at the end. But then having that conversation with him is what solidifies his beliefs as to what he actually feels about his family and also is like, all right, there's something here worth fighting for. I need to go back and protect my house because no one else is willing to do it. Ultimately, it boils down to just seeing the importance of the people in your life and not taking them for granted. And that's... Because people will often point to the climax of Home Alone as the as the best part, and it's certainly the one that will get talked about the most because it's just so outlandish. But underneath all the crazy antics is a very heartfelt tale that has withstood the test of time, and 
I really don't envision this ever fading out of obscurity at any point. No one will ever remember the Home Sweet Home Alone or anything between two and that, but the original is is always timeless. Well, they have to know it exists in order to remember it. <laughs> well, we'll see you in Home Alone 2 now, in which the wet bandits find themselves in a sticky situation. Ah, so yeah, one of the major reasons I want to watch 1 and 2 in the same session, is, in the same video, is just because you're gonna notice that it's, um, quite similar in a lot of areas, but I guess we'll... Which I actually like, but... We'll talk about that when we get to it, so... One down, five to go. <sighs> you guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? Home Alone 2, lost in New York in the city that never... Or sorry, no, I, I already bungled it. He's up past his bedtime in the city that never sleeps. Okay. Well, it's funny, because New York City is the city that never sleeps. I'm the Statue of Liberty. I mean, the Statue of Liberty is awake 24-7, so... It's just, might as well call it Insomnia City. But actually, it sounds like a good city name. Wait, what? I mean, I, I, I'm sure that I'm not in a city that never sleeps. All my all the supermarkets for in my in my place are, are already closed. <laughs> Dang, this intro is pretty messy. We must be a bit lost in New York. So about Home Alone 2, ladies and gentlemen, lost in New York. Home Alone 2. I I'm I'm positive that when I was a kid I liked this one more than the original just because it was everything was bigger. The scope was bigger, the stakes were bigger, the setting was much larger than it was. Arguably it's funnier, arguably the emotional core is stronger, but as an adult I have soured on this movie considerably critically. I still love it, I still adore watching it every year, but putting this side by side with the original, I'm extremely confident that the conclusion will be that the original is the better made film overall. Yeah, the original is more airtight than the second one, but I still like the second one more because it's funnier. Also, I, I don't want to be that guy, but I have more nostalgia for the second one than I do the first. I don't want that to affect the score, just mention that. I know that it's really contrived for how the plot works, and also it retreads like the exact same story beats as the original does. But I can't help but like it more than Home Alone 1, even if Home Alone 1 is the stronger film. And the rest of you- actually, Waffles has seen these movies, I believe. I've seen the first two in Home Sweet, Sweet Home Alone. Oh. Oh, the only ones you need. The only <laughs> Home Alone movies, the essentials. You know, your Home Alone 1s, your Home Alone 2, and your Home Sweet Home Alone. So that's all you really need to see, honestly. Like, Home Sweet Home Alone, like, that's the best Home Alone movie. I know, right? It has sweet literally in the title. So good that it actually- actually got the director of the first two to speak out against it because of how much he hated it. <laughs> Obviously just a hater if you ask me. Literally came into Disney headquarters on his broomstick to the top of the Mickey Mouse tower. I picture like a the Disney tower being like a really stereotypical villain base where it's just like at the very top it's just obscenely high and you just have lightning striking. You know he's just there on his broomstick just like into the Disney HQ. It's just Lord Business's tower from the Lego movie. Oh, this is just business. Lord Business. Anyway, Waffles, one or two, which is better? That was all I wanted to know out of that conversation. Like, personally, I don't really give a shit. Okay. Great. Should we went through all that for you to not give a great. shit? Okay, great. All right, well, uh, so, uh, Guganic and OJ, do you two give a shit? I, well, no, because they haven't, they, they have no, they haven't seen the second one. So. Uh, I've only seen one, so, objectively, because, because of that, uh, one is better, because for me it exists. <laughs> for me it exists, two, I still have, it still not, it doesn't exist for me. I like the first movie a lot, so I have high hopes for this one, even if I haven't seen it, and I've heard that it's good, so. I am prepared to be blown away to New York and enjoy this movie. That, that seems like a good feeling. Uh, I would like to continue having this feeling like in a, while it lasts, because after this movie, that, that feeling will not exist anymore. The feeling of uh, hoping for a good movie. Home Alone 2 is pretty much like, it's like three quarters, like genuinely really good stuff, and then one quarter like funny bad stuff. Kind of. So, like, no matter what, it no matter what, it never gets boring. It's entertaining throughout, but some parts are like, eh. I still think it is Jesus a good film. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Get a copy of Home Sweet Home Alone. Enter your door. Quick, get the no, raid. Uh, uh, Don't let it any I, further I, than it I, needs I to. I forgot I had my stupid Pokemon ball here, and it just turned on itself, oh. and the very loudly okay. screamed freaking All right. Pikachu. All right. Everyone leave. No, it's okay, officers. No Home Sweet Home Alone copies entered OJ's house. It's okay. You can go. Pokemon continuing to destroy everything as usual. Yeah, Pokemon. Hey, 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 OJ, what's that? A Pokemon thing you have glitched out? Wow, who could have guessed? <sighs> hey, remember that time when I played po Pokemon Legends Arceus and I stood in knee-high water and I drowned? Dang, two minutes into the game already finding bugs. Oh my god, I can't believe it was inspired by Sonic Boom Rise of Alert. <laughs>
Great. Yeah, no, uh, we all know that Pokemon trainers, they breathe through their legs. I still stand by the fa- by my opinion that they should have hired Monolith Soft to make this, that world design. It's just... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe they could have, like, instead of pumping a Pokemon game every year, you could do what the Zelda series does. Wait a couple years and then put out an actually finished product when you're done. Oh, yeah, that's, thought, a, that's a good idea, too. I thought that when you said what the Zelda, Zelda series does, uh, I thought you were going to say... Uh, Hiring Monolith Soft to make their world. <laughs> I mean, they did hire Monolith Soft. They have a lot of people on board, but like they also do wait a long time. Like we went from 2017 to 2023 to get new entries, but then the game came out with like zero bugs except for what people had to like go out of their way to find bugs. Whereas Legends RCS, Trevor's over here, like looking away for a couple seconds. He looks back. Oh, look at that! My Pokemon trainer is drowning in knee high water. <laughs> wow. It, it was. But yeah. anyway, enough about bugs and glitches. Let's talk about. Home Alone 2. We have to get into it. All right, yeah. Are you guys ready? We are. I am ready to go. On go. Three, two, one, go. That conversation could could have gotten as big as New York there. Why do you do this? <laughs> there's deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> there's deja. Yeah. There's deja vu. John, there's John Hughes. It's funny. We're gonna. Swear, I'm gonna be saying that a lot throughout this movie. That's yeah. deja vu. <laughs> that is that is totally unironically though. First of all, the intro. There's deja vu. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a little more snow this time. Yeah. No. All right. So are you sure it's that different. we we booted up the right movie? <laughs> yeah. There's more snow, and that's to show that it's a bigger story. It's the same as the original, but bigger. So there's more snow. Also, did did you just say that the director changed for? <laughs> For the third movie. Yes. That's also deja vu, except for the Harry Potter movies. I have the Sega Genesis, the Sega Genesis Home Alone 2 game on my shelf. I've never played it. I'm guessing it's gonna be uh, shit. So, uh, <laughs> and also, my Genesis uh, doesn't even work anymore, so I can't. Also, Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. Oh, <laughs> Already, the film is not off to a good start, but then Tim Curry elevates it a little bit. It's like, okay, yeah. okay, Tim Curry. All right, not all shitty people. John Williams again. I think, I'm not sure. Hey, Trevor, do you prefer Home Alone 1 or 2 soundtrack more? They kind of blend together in my head. All right, sure. Home Alone 1 and 2 have the same soundtrack here. I don't think that's exactly what I said, but... Oh. <laughs> no, it's totally what Trevor said. You know, I, I'm sure someone's done it, but if you did, like... A side-by-side -side presentation <laughs> yeah, side -by -side. of these movies. The amount of shots that would line up is more than you might think. I'm sorry though. It was the first line said in this movie? Are there nude beaches in Florida? Was that was that the first words I heard when the movie started? <laughs> dude, I would I would fucking destroy Ding Dang Dong, dude. Honey, are you packed yet? Yes. Yes. That's a surprise tool that will help yeah, us later. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> oh, did you see what Grandma Penelope sent you for the trip? An inflatable clown to play with in the pool. That's another surprise tool. Yeah, I was about to say, they're not, they're not making this as uh, as clever as before, huh? I, I got Here's what I got you for Christmas. All the mystery mouse tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that actually reminds me of my freaking childhood. It, except it wasn't a freaking clown, it was a, a crocodile. And I went to the beach and because... Because of the tide, I literally ended up on someone else's freaking towel. Yeah, no, uh, the Kevin's mom also went on her broomstick to the Disney Tower to get that. You, guys, you might want to pay close attention here. So look at what he does here. He unplugs the thing and then unplugs something else out of the thing, which then causes the clocks to um, reset. Unclock. Why won't you just unplug the thing at the bottom? Yeah, like that's, it wasn't, so obviously the reason why they do this is so that they can excuse why they don't wake up on time because apparently that's the only alarm clock in the entire house. But it wasn't even needed because you could have just unplugged the charger for the camcorder from the block instead of unplugging the entire block from the thing. Well, you could have made it so, you know, he had to take it out in order to, to take the thing he wanted, but that's not what it, look, what it looked like, so... They also managed to make me hate Uncle Frank even more. Not only is he a piece of shit, he can't even sing. Like, zero redeeming qualities. This week, I'm her hell. I'm the king of the coo Get out of here, you nosy little pervert, or I'm gonna slap you silly! Christmas tree, hi Christmas tree. Kevin Solo's coming out. Tell us. Okay, Frank. Frank? Huh? 
Sukin. Okay, he, indeed, a third. He is actually the worst character. Yeah, no, no. I, as if you didn't know that. So I never, I've literally never understood why people laugh. So yeah, hard like, like, oh why? my god, dude, they're holding candles up to his ears. It's not attention. that funny. Like, listen, the entire. Wait, wait, that that's the joke. Yes. Yeah, he's putting candles to his ears. It's, like, it's, like, shit, dude. it's like a parody edit. At least, at least the drums. Okay, I could kind of see the drums, but like holding the candles up to his ears, like what the fuck? Yo, look, guys, look at these candles. Laugh track. Like, could they even see that properly? Also, also this. This does. This makes no fucking sense. Oh god. I don't believe this. Like, did, you saw him push him. He barely pushed him. He fell on purpose, very clearly. Oh, all right. Oh, then, oh no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fucking dominoes, dude. Kevin! Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Poor piano man. <laughs> so a lot just happened there that we need to break down. So first of all, I don't know why the entire auditorium was erupting in laughter from just holding the candles behind his ears. Like, I, could they even see it that well from that far away? I'm not. I wouldn't say so. They all have. They have. They're all lizard people, Trevor. And then so Kevin pushes Buzz and that somehow knocks him over. But maybe he just flopped like a soccer player. It's fine. But then somehow that causes a domino effect for everybody else to fall, even though he didn't knock into anybody else except maybe the people immediately around him. Like, it, it, it was so, uh I did what I did because Buzz humiliated me. And since he gets away with everything, I'll let him have it. Let's go, Kevin. Preach, Kevin. Who wants to spend Christmas in a tropical climate anyway? You better not wreck my trip, you little sour puss. Your dad's paying good money for Self -awareness. it. Self-awareness. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, we know about his how he turns your bed into a swimming pool. What a troubled young man. You know, I've never really liked this just because it, it sort of cheapens the aftermath of the first movie. Because, like, at the beginning at the beginning of the first one, the family was very dysfunctional and rude. But the implication is that after going through such a difficult situation, it, it leads them to start mending broken relationships moving forward but then you see how everyone acts in this movie and you're just like did they though i'm not sure and you can stay up here the rest of the night because that went so well last year if i had my own money i go on my own vacation alone without any of you guys it's just like replacing keywords in the first movie script <laughs> it's just home alone mad libs so was this made during a writer's strike or what <laughs> dude i swear to god the, the writers the writers their keyboard they broke the control c and v keys oh the paper should have been enough to knock it over that'd be funny yeah just paper knocks the statue over <laughs> dong yes it'd be funny i do like that transition though and oh oh oh, oh, yeah, oh okay there we, go, there we go we did it again i don't we did it again why is this the only functioning alarm clock oh, in the entire and, and, and you see it's also it's also sped up because they because they know, but you know, they won't actually deal with the problem. Because like, in, in the first in the first movie, the power knocked everything out so no one's clock's working, but in this movie, it's specifically their clock that was uh, that was turned offline, and it's only because of sheer incompetence. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, would, you would think that any of the other ones has a clock, right? Right? Oh, and by, by the way, I want to make clear, it's, it's not strictly a flaw that the plot beats here are almost identical to that of the first film. I actually like that the plot beats are identical to the first film, though. Well, so what I was where I was going with that is that it's not really an issue inherently because the first film's great. So if you just and and obviously the situation for most of the movie plays out quite differently because it's entirely set in New York. So you can't you can't really emulate the exact same experience as the first movie when the setting is so radically changed. But it's the fact that in their efforts to emulate the success of the original, they've significantly compromised the integrity of the script. And I think the clearest example of it is everything that's about to happen in this airport that allows them because by this point it's like okay everything's running naturally they they she noticed in the car where's kevin and kevin was already in the car so it's like all right how can you possibly screw this up now what can possibly go wrong yeah what can possibly like what you think you think that some shenanigans are just gonna fall from the sky so problem one kevin is at the back of the pack he's the caboose problem two that that jacket is a hot commodity around these parts you, you'd think especially because of last year's events that they'd be hyper aware of where kevin is at all times and now here's problem two someone with the exact same dressing <laughs> build and haircut as his dad that's slips amazing right well, in good. front that's, of him that is that is so good sense, you know 
Yeah, Trevor, it is. I mean, hey, that Gorgonic is right. That Yeah, it, it's an inciting incident, it Trevor. Is. You can't knock the movie. It, it, I, I didn't say that, so I didn't say that. But it also is signif it's a significantly greater stretch than what happened in the first movie. By a considerable margin. And by the way, we're still not done yet. There's still more things about this that, that allow Kevin... Because, like, you surely are thinking, well, his ticket is for a completely different flight. How would they ever let him on the plane, right? Like, how could that ever possibly work? Well, let me tell you. Don't worry. God the ticket <laughs> like he clearly specifically oh. aimed for her hands where like her okay yeah like literally like kevin kevin that that woman is not the statue outside of your house he dropped his boarding pass he's playing candy this happened to be last year and almost wrecked me christmas Ford it. make sure he locates his family before you leave okay make sure he locates his family before he leaves yeah that's pretty reasonable. so what, what what does she do instead there's my dad over there okay we'll go find an empty seat have a merry christmas that no! Even send him to his erection, okay. Yeah, 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 he's what? my family. Well, uh, would you say that, hey, hey Audrey, you, you born a, a, a plane recently, would you say that's about as helpful as... <laughs> I mean, that is accurate to the flight attendants. Yeah, is that your family? Yeah, okay, cool, okay, bye, see ya. When you're, deal when you're dealing with a clearly lost child, I don't care that you're in a rush to go somewhere, you, it would take a few extra seconds to just walk him up to the person he believes to be his father and confirm that it is actually his family. And also... Yeah, no. I like how she's like... Go find an empty seat. What? I, I, at Christmas time. Yeah, just go, just go, yeah, just go, just go find an empty seat. There's no empty seats. Okay, just find, hopefully just you stand. find, like, a handle or something. And yeah, so to, to further amplify the whole inciting incident thing, I, it's, the presence of the doppelganger in the airport is a significantly greater stretch than anything that happened <laughs> the in the doppelganger. first movie. And also, it's not even just contrived, wow. it's just straight up a lot. Oh, how very inconvenient he, of you, uh... It's just straight up illogical. Not only that Kevin was at the back of the pack when they absolutely should have been paying extra close attention, but also that the lady doesn't even like bother to, to confirm that his family is actually all in that place. It's so, it's so stupid. I have that feeling. I got a feeling. Her bad mother senses are tingling. Now look at that. It's literally the same line of dust. I have a terrible feeling that we didn't do something. We took care of everything. Believe me, we did. I have that feeling. You forgot something? We did everything. We brought everything. We have everybody. There's nothing to worry about. The, the screenplay is literally just like fucking Mad Libs. I think the the screenwriters misinterpreted what doing it again. Means. Yeah, no, no, no. What happened? Here's what happened, right? So basically, John Hughes wrote an entire script and he was running to give it to the director, but then he bumped into the director and the entire screenplay for both movies fell into a huge pile. So then they just scrambled it up. They're like, oh, fuck. Which one's for which movie? Oh, no. Not only did he bump into her, he specific like, he, if you watch the shot again, he clearly aimed his hand specifically for... Yeah, like, th that's what you would do if you purposely wanted to get in the fly Yeah, too. Kevin literally, literally went fucking football mode there. Also, realize how he has literally nothing with him right now. That, 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 oh, that must be terrifying. Well, he has his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean... Which includes money, you if would, I remember correctly. I mean, he has some stuff, but I... They made sure to include the shot where you see that he has the money in his bag. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. Kevin's not here. Everyone's like, Kevin's not here. Even Kevin's not here. Process Kevin's with, not here. Like, what that means. They like, probably, they, no, they don't process it. They're just like, yeah, Kevin's not here. Currently processing information. Please stand by. Kevin! There's deja vu. Dang, I didn't remember Florida looking this good. Wait a minute, people have brains here? Do they? Eh, maybe. Yeah, he just sees uh, the Mario Bros. What city is that over there? It's New York, sir. Yikes, I did it again. Something wrong, sir? I'll be fine. You could okay. tell her. Yeah, I, why, why doesn't he exactly? So you could tell her, or you could capitalize off the opportunity to explore one of the greatest cities in the world entirely by yourself. Yeah, I, I would, I would, yeah, I'd probably do that. You know what? Yeah, I guess that's... We really are just doing it again, huh? We're doing yeah. a sequel! Oh yeah. Hey, at least they're still using music good. Crazy Taxi! Welcome to Cash Cab. They just want an excuse to go to New York. <laughs> if, you, if you look really closely, you might see a blue dog in a couple of the shots. Oh no. If you look really closely, you'll see that this entire city is actually on like a 45 degree slant for some reason. Oh, yeah, so, so, so how did he just get up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just got up there. The elevator? You know what? 
Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> now I see the problem. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah Guganic, yeah, Guganic. Yeah, do you think that through there? <laughs> the elevator. <laughs> I mean, the better question is why he's the only person that's on the observation deck. Yeah. Did everyone get through security? I don't know. We were in a hurry. We were in a hurry. We had to run all the way to the gate. We were in a hurry, dude. This 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 copium right here. Has he ever been in a situation where he's been on his own? Why would you shake your head? What? what? Why would you know that's incorrect? That you know that's incorrect. What? As a matter of fact, yes, we have lost this p particular child. It's becoming sort of a McAllister family travel tradition. Don't <laughs> say it like that. This is the second time. Don't say it like a, it's a, it's a. Oh my god. Yeah, this this may or may not be a reoccurring thing here. Live Paul Blart reaction. It may or may not be true that th that this almost exact same thing happened last year. Yeah, it may or may not be the same. It's like almost. It was uncanny how similar it was. Honestly, and, and it's far less excusable this time than it was last time. Yeah, this is where the parents go from, okay, they, they made him oopsie, to, okay, they need to, like, get investigated here. Very unlikely he'd be anywhere else. Yeah, it is very unlikely they'd be anywhere else, because the yeah, circumstances it'd be that... very unlikely that he'd be at the... It's very unlikely that your child is at the top of the World Trade Center right now. However, with that being said... Which, what's even, what's even more unlikely? With that being <laughs> said, even if you bought everything else, all the other circumstances that allow Kevin to end up in New York City, the astronomical odds that both Kevin and... No fucking way. No fucking way. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, that's really fishy, I must admit. <laughs> There's just no way. You know, yeah, Trevor, you gotta understand, New York in Home Alone 2 is as big as New York Minute in Mario Kart 8. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it, right? They clearly wanted them back because they say were so good the first time, but come on. I mean, yeah, it's it's better than casting whoever the fuck with the villains were in the rest of the movies. <laughs> we're speaking of the rest of the movies. Ooh. No, 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 no. No, 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 no not yet, not yet. No, don't worry, wow. that will take a little over a week for for you, for us to get there. Trevor right now is like, no, not yet. At least let me have like at least one hour, 36 minutes of bliss here. We're the sticky bandits. Oh my god. Yeah, see, they went from being just the, the sticky, wet bandits to now the sticky So which sticky is worse, bandits. Trevor? We need to do a poll. Which is the better name? The wet bandits or the sticky bandits? I, I, Like, yeah. neither of them, neither of them should be allowed within a, a New York City away from children. What do you think, Waffles? What's better? Wet bandits or sticky bandits? I really like the sticky bandits. Yeah, he, of course you'd like the sticky bandits. <laughs> You're literally covered in syrup. <laughs> Like, listen, I am a sticky bandit. You gotta understand. Oh, okay. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a sticky bandit that's stolen my brain cells. <laughs> Waffles' quote of the year. I am a sticky bandit. Yeah, I, I am a sticky bandit. Also, why is he scared of this woman? Oh, she has birds on her? Oh, we gotta shit. do it again. There's deja vu. So, yes, it is deja vu, but also, are you aware of how absolutely horrifically evil New York pigeons are? <laughs> or pigeons in general? I mean, I mean, the only pigeons I know of that are really scary are the ones from the last crusade i think those are seagulls oh, <laughs> oh my oh, god wow. <laughs> oh, what, oh wow what are the odds yes you know, what are the odds the they made joke, it to lap right? two the whole joke is that they're gonna bump into it. yep literally bump into each other no like actually though god dude kevin should like buy a lottery ticket <laughs> he's like no there's no way there's no way he'd be here surely he's just hallucinating like like skinner and ratatouille oh, what yeah so by the way um it seems like it's a joke in the moment but the fact that they both got distracted by bumping into kevin temporarily is actually going to have major major implications for later in the story mm. so just uh it's literally dominoes yeah. just just keep that in mind for later uh oh here oh oh no oh no oh no oh oh i i see where this is going <laughs> i don't what oh you'll s oh. <laughs> I wonder if Kevin oh, no. couldn't get in there. There was a random wall placed in front of the building. <laughs> yeah, it's the meme. Here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the Insert box <laughs> up here. Just, just put it on the screen. <laughs> it's perfect. Everybody, quickly be quiet. I got. I, dang. Never mind. Thank great waffles. So apparently, I'm pretty sure that the Donald Trump let them film at his hotel as long as they ha gave him a cameo in the movie. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I also heard that they removed the carpets for filming so that they can do some of the action scenes later, and he liked it so much that they, he just never had the carpets refitted afterwards. <laughs> okay. Damn. Then. He's like carpets, nah. Credit card, you got it. 
Plaza Hotel Reservations may help you. Like a hotel room, please. Yes. With an extra large bed, TV, and one of those little refrigerators you have to open with a key. You'll need a major credit card upon checking. Credit card, you got it. Thank you. Good thing she didn't ask any other questions because I'm, I'm not yeah. sure it's that yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Literally, one, it's like one, a, one more question. The last dead. time we did this song and dance, you know, everything just fit it. Oh, oh yeah. Imagine you're walking by and Tim Curry looks at you like that. Dude, Tim Curry is like best character in the movie. It's the, the best thing about this movie is Tim Curry. As usual, right? The only thing I've seen in the, uh, Tim Curry in is this movie. A reservation for yourself. Ma'am. My feet are hardly touching the ground. How can I make a reservation for a hotel room? There's deja vu. Hmm. So is this woman in the credits, Trevor, as woman who uh, asked if Kevin's getting a reservation <laughs> for himself? I hope so. <laughs> I hope every Home Alone movie has. Some I mean, she. Realness. I mean, then again, she has a she has a bigger part in the movie than just she does. Being the person that tells me. I mean, like, she's in the movie, unlike the other one who was cut out. Ah, did imagine like you give the Oscar-worthy performance as woman who tells Kevin where aisle forty-two is, and then you get cut out of the oh, movie like <laughs> fuck, dude. There's a guy. Okay, so. One of the credits is Ding Dang Dong Host. Okay. Oh my god, dude. There's a new Oscar snub. My wallet's in my bag. Kevin was looking in my bag at the airport. He was looking for batteries. Kevin has my wallet. Damn, we just we just left the kid we left behind with all my valuables. Oh yeah, my oh, my insurance is in there. Your son has the cards. We can get a location on him. No, I don't think Kevin even knows how to use a credit card. Yeah, Kevin would never use a credit card. A, a credit card isn't exactly the most difficult thing. Yeah, not... literally, like, like you yeah. grab the card and you just go, whoop, the end. I feel constipated as fuck right now. Thank you the for sharing, fuck? Waffles. <laughs> waffles, you know, you know, so Waffles, are you constipated because it's filled with syrup? I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna put a kibosh in this conversation right here. <laughs> and now. Yeah, no, we already, we already, we already have one shit bag in the movie. We don't need another. I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna have to take a shit. Oh, okay, I, I finally got w w what Waffles said. Sorry, there's a similar word in Portuguese that me does not mean the same thing at all. Great. Anyway, this is a nice room. It is. It's a ginormous room. Extra large bed. Wait, is that just a present on the table? A uh, refrigerator you have to open with a key. Huge bed just for me. Do you know how the TV works? I'm 10 years old. TV's my life. So that's one really small thing that's always bothered me about this movie. It's so small, but it really grinds my gears. They say that Kevin is 10 in this one, but he was 8 in the last one. But they also say that this takes place a year after the first one. Wait, did I miss that? Was that straight up stated? Well, you got your wish last year. Maybe you'll get it again this year. This happened to be last year and almost wrecked my Christmas. Left at home. By accident last year. Spent nine months in jail thinking we had the worst luck in the universe. Don't you remember what happened last year? Trevor, don't you know that Kevin has two birthdays? <laughs> And like, Isn't that common knowledge? Well, so like, obviously the reason why they did it is because they filmed this two years after the first one, so Macaulay Culkin would have aged two years since then, but it's just... You could have said it two years after. Or though. that, or also, can you... I don't know, I feel like if I told you he was nine, I don't think you would question it. Yeah. It's not like he's 14 trying to pass as a nine-year-old. <laughs> See, like, Kevin can be a bit of a brat sometimes, but he clearly has a, a level of sympathy and respect in him, which is what part of what makes him so easy to root for in these movies. Yeah, he's literally the best person in the entire family. Because you, you need you need to be able to root for Kevin, otherwise watching him beat the shit out of the robbers wouldn't really like Yeah, yeah, I, I imagine, yeah. imagine, imagine if you were to, like, not root for someone you needed to root for in a Home Alone movie. Like, that would be, that would be obscene, you know? Or if it were, like, the inverse in which the person you're not supposed to root for, you end up rooting for... That would be so stupid if that were to happen in any of the future. Anyway, Home Alone. angels with even filthier souls. While eating ice cream. The best part is that much like Home Alone 1 and 2, this is very, very similar to what happens in the first angels with filthy souls. Yeah. You was here last night too, wasn't you? She was smooching with your brother. <laughs> they Kevin seen this movie like 50 million times, dude. This is fucking hilarious. Not well, oh my I mean, God, it, it's hilarious. I'm just thinking about, yeah, oh. it, It's hilarious because you and I... I, I I'm gonna stop talking because you haven't seen the movie yet. I'm gonna give you to the count of three to get your lousy, lying, low down, four flushing carcass out my door. One, two... <laughs> Literally, the freaking same. Again. Hell yeah, dude. Every single, there's like 50 of these movies, and they're all just like the one scene of him shooting some person. Yeah. Oh no, don't let the Grinch come in. Oh no, not, don't let Pennywise in your room. <laughs> Housekeeping. Oh, it's like. <laughs> I love how he's so confident that something's wrong here that he breaks into his hotel room. Housekeeping, I just need to slowly break into your room if you don't mind. And not even that, he go he he aims for the bathroom specifically. Yes, yeah, so let me break into the bathroom of my hotel guests. <laughs> Dude, he's smiling too. He's literally it's Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's just looking at him just like peeking. What are you doing? <laughs> 
dude, like, there's, the there's the stare of, okay, Trevor, <laughs> there's the stare of that old man from the first movie, and then there's the stare of Tim Curry entering the washroom. You ever Oh, get it? Uh. Kevin is really good at puppeteering. <laughs> Although I don't think I don't buy that he could set it up in like the two seconds of yeah, him walking. Yeah, he, 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 he did not have enough. To, uh, the only steel man offense is that he had it set up in advance and he just had to get the water ready. But like I don't know that he would have had a reason to suspect it. Yeah, he was just he was just anticipating Tim Curry showing up into the washroom. <laughs> Ow! I, I wonder if that was part of the <laughs> of what was supposed to happen if, if it just happened by accident. You don't understand the stool. The stool is made out of the same magnet as that statue outside of Kevin's house. Because in the first movie when he set up all the puppetry when they roll by to set to fake a party he had all day to set that up whereas he had like 30 seconds at most in that scene to get that all working properly yeah i, I love the the juxtaposition between the it's the most wonderful time of the year if everyone just crapped in this bus while it's raining just like statues except uncle frank who they, of course they put him in the back they're like yeah we're shoving him in the back dude. the hoping that maybe he'll get lost like kevin did because people who mm. are at the back end up yeah wait, where's the uncle frank spinoff where they just don't even bother trying to check for him hey uncle rob lives here they're back from paris i'll drop in on them I too exposit to myself when I'm in my bed. Wait, Trevor, I just had a thought. That guy at uh, your Brooks's English class, he might have had a convincing argument if he literally just used Home Alone 2 instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he picked the wrong movie. Yeah, like, that scene felt like it could have worked if it was in the first movie instead. I still have some tip left over. No tip? Okay. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Just pulls out like a million <laughs> fifties. <laughs> like actually the entire Disney vault of money. Mr. McAllister. Mr. McAllister. And how are we this morning? I'm totally not gonna murder you in your sleep or anything like that. <laughs> that would be uh, unbecoming of a person of my status. Last night. I was simply checking the room to make sure everything was in order. Including invading your bathroom while you shower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was simply just inspecting the shower, you know, just as, as you do. If some guy looked at you in the shower, would you ever want to see him again? <laughs> I don't think you'll see him for the rest of our trip. I understand. You see, yeah, he sort of he saw played himself here. He gave Kevin the perfect excuse he needed to. Yeah. Have a lovely day. <laughs> Have a lovely day. I love that. Have a lovely day. Oh, amazing, so amazing line delivery. Oh, I love this shot. I absolutely fucking love this shot. It makes literally no sense at all, but I love it so much. Wait, what, what about it? Not this you'll one. See, it's, you'll it's see, you'll see, you'll see. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You'll see. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Day. I wouldn't eat that cheese pizza. He's infected it. <laughs> just add the added steam inside of it. <laughs> like they actually just put a bunch of steam. They filled the box up with steam. And no, then just so they, they can open they, it up. They, they cooked it in the car. The first movie has Pepsi product placement. This one has Coke product placement. You know, same thing but different. Like the movie. As you see, this Coke is actually a metaphor for the movie. You know, it's actually... If I push my glasses up... You can actually see, it's the same exact drink, but just with different label, and also that shot is so fucking good. The best transition ever. <laughs> Within your Think. heart. And not only that, this <laughs> shot, this shot. <laughs> this is so good, dude! It's so perfect, the fucking light bulb above his head. This dude, shot that is, is the amazing best. and should be taught in every film school. <laughs> That is the best five seconds of any film ever. Go cutting from the Grinch transition to Tim Curry to the fucking light bulb above his head. It's amazing. Peak cinema. Anyway, the sticky bandits are also in this movie. Now we're stuck with these clowns. Oh yeah, they are. Kind of wonder why, you know. Uh, Tim Curry seems like he, he'd do, be able to do it fine by himself. He's literally, he's literally just fucking swiper, dude. I need cash. I need it now. This guy literally just fucking stealing shit from people. I like how nobody ever notices. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Marv is a fucking, he's a, gr he's a like great we're, thief, like, we're, we're not good enough, we don't have the equipment to s actually steal f uh, things from here. Why do you come here then? You did not think this through, did you? I don't think you need equipment to steal things when Marv can, is literally just a phantom thief and he can just swipe or yoink his people's stuff without them noticing. The worst one is when he robs the earmuffs off the lady Marv. because, like, it's on your head. How can you, it's like if someone ripped your headphones off. Trevor, you're making, okay, don't make fun of a lady who has no sense of feel, all right? Come on. It is true. Maybe she's so numb from the cold that she doesn't she doesn't feel anything anymore. Yeah. In which case, go to the hospital and leave, please. Duncan's- the toy Duncan's chest. Also still very interesting car design. It- 
It's just a limo. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, well, I guess I've never seen one then. God, I, I missed when John Williams knew how to music. Well, I'm pretty sure he still knows. It's just eh, all the does people he, are like, he, can you just can you just do the tracks that we already know? Can you just do the same melodies over and over? He just yeah, he just got temporary amnesia when he made the uh, Battle of Destiny soundtrack. So like, can you make YouTube audio library music? Also, this reminds me of a track in the first Harry Potter movie. I uh, I mean, by chance, OJ, you think that might have something to do with the fact that John Williams is also the composer for the Harry Potter movies? Yeah, John Williams and Chris Columbus yeah, were both it, working on Harry it Potter might, it might movies. Might be that, but it also has to do with the fact that the, the the setting is very similar because it's a Christmas themed scene specifically there. As if anyone's gonna believe that these two fucking old guys are just part of the house. I like, yeah. Yeah, you buy Wait, one. What? It's a buy one, get one free deal. Like, who would buy that? <laughs> like, if that was the game, like, who would buy that? Maybe that's the idea, to keep mm. anyone from buying them so that they have a place to hide yeah. out until the store closes. My, 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 where did you get all that money? Oh, uh, well, I sued this guy after he went to look at my uncle in the shower. Kevin could absolutely destroy the Plaza restaurant by saying, hey, bell service came to my room and invaded my father while he was showering. <laughs> yeah, I, I have <laughs> audio footage of this happening, too. Yeah, I just have a recording of him literally admitting it. Mr. Duncan is donating it to the children's hospital. The day after Christmas, empty out all the money in the cash register, and Mr. Duncan just takes it right down to the hospital. Now the bandits are just literally going to steal from freaking children. It's in that way. You can give this to Mr. Duncan. The hospital needs it more than I do. I'm probably gonna spend it on stuff that'll rot my teeth and my mind. That sentence seems like it was constructed to appeal to boomers. Uh, I don't want to spend it on stuff that'll rot my teeth and my mind, you know, like that, the rock music that's poisoning the children these days. The turtle doves. You keep one, and you give the other one to a very special person. Now, as long as each of you have your turtle dove, you'll be friends forever. Thanks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. For as contrived as the beginning of this movie is, I absolutely love everything that has to do with this toy store and the hotel, for two very different reasons. Oh, yeah. One's That's very great. moving, the other is hilarious. The middle of the movie is just like, Flawless. Like, actually peak cinema. Well, uh, uh, okay, so I wouldn't push it that far because we're about- I would. No, I- no, I pushed it that far. It's perfect. Okay, well then you brought- you chose a very- Perfect. You chose a very bad time to say that because we're about to have something very, very interesting happen. I love everything to do with the toy store and the hotel. What I do not love is that Harry and Marv bump right into oh, him. I love everything to do with the toy store, just not outside the toy store. And that he has binoculars built into his eyes so we can zoom into the backpack and see that it has the word McAllister on it. What? Yeah, dude, his eyes have just improved. Hiya, pal. And because it's well, New York, that, that, no one cares. Yeah, no, literally, this is just a normal day in New York. Some kid screaming at two old creepy guys trying to grab him with their hand. Yeah, that, that's just, that's New York for you. Welcome to Tuesday. Although I do like this chase thing. <laughs> just, just, what? So his gloves are just an internal, just an internal nuisance. I do quite like this. This guy is just like, there's two guys chasing him. It's it convenient that there happened to be a bead vendor right there, but... And there's also, isn't there another vendor there I saw beside it? I thought I saw another vendor beside that I, one. I would more appeal to the fact that on his route uh, between I mean, the toy chest, or the toy yeah. store, and the hotel happened to be a vendor providing him exactly what he needed. I mean, it was just, it could have been anything else. He probably would have made use for it. You're right, it could have been anything else, but it wasn't. <laughs> And because there was no one else crossing that, that area at the yeah, moment. No, Trevor, don't you know the population of New York is really small? Appar <laughs> apparently. Only a couple of Goombas live there. Moving from one villain to another. Yeah, because of the way this the is all set up. The villain of the week. Because of the way this is all set up, it essentially has Kevin stuck between a rock and a hard place, which is great. Dude, I swear, they're all, they're all colluding. Store wouldn't take your stolen credit card. Let's see what the police have to say about this. <laughs> And it would have been so, so fucking funny if when the bandits tried to get him, they both bumped into Donald Trump and it stopped them. What? There he is, get him. What the this fuck? Part's, this part's great, he has soap knees. What? Whoa! What? Oh. The big oh. ass elevator door. Goodbye. This fucking, this oh. is the best scene, this is the best part of the whole fucking movie. So dude. remember what, okay. remember what I said about them having to remove the carpets for, for a particular reason? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, he was gonna, he was literally about to say, you little shit. But he never did. Also, Rob's face, just like, he's, he's high as fuck right now, dude. 
<laughs> Gotta grab the cookies. In case of emergency, break glass with cookies. Oh my god, the old ass sheriff. Oh, there you go. This is, this is amazing. Hold it right there. There's deja vu. I don't care if it's deja vu, this is fucking amazing. I could smell you getting off the elevator. <laughs> oh, this is so good, dude. And it makes sense you'd have to do it again. Like, yeah, eh, even if it is a retread of the original, it makes sense you'd go stick to doing this again. Yeah, but the other, it's more so the fact that both movies the, the, yeah. were written to I mean, perfectly match yeah. the exact situations he needs them for. Yeah, I'd say more like uh, the fact that there's another thing coming up that's more like contrived. Cheeks, bony bab, cliff. <gasps> Like this especially, it, it's just... <laughs> like the fact that his name is Cliff is fucking perfect, dude. No. He's like, what? He's like, no, I, I would, I would never. Do. It's a lie. <laughs> I'm afraid you're mistaken. We are looking for a young man. I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. <laughs> I love That's you. So <laughs> you better have had the recorder out for that one. I. I love how he moved his hands in like an orchestrating gesture too. I'm gonna give you to the count of three to get your lousy, lying, low down, four flushing carcass out my door. One. <laughs> At least they actually run this time. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. And hotel TVs probably could be that loud too. They could be that loud, but there is a question of would you believe that VHS quality audio is enough to trick anybody into believing it's a real person? Eh. Yeah, absolutely. At least through a door, like like through a you know outside the house, that, that's a, a bit more understandable than inside it. Than being in the same room as them, yeah. I'm also kind of. Uh, do, do they not know what oh, come VHS on. they have? Yeah, so what I was gonna say there is at least the contrivance there leads to something that's really funny, but this is just... Okay, so Harry I mean, and Marge... They Mar saw him go into the Plaza Hotel, so they stuck around, stuck around the door. No, but no, they did so, Okay, so Harry and Marv getting the jump on Kevin made sense in the first movie because they had already robbed that house, and so they knew the layout well enough to come... That's, that's why the water was flooding through the house, so that was the telltale sign that they had been there before, so they knew it enough to be able to cut him off. How could they have possibly known that Kevin was going to escape through specifically that loading dock? Toy chest. Five floors of cash. Oh, there you go. Third quarter. Ah, it's off the Rio. Ah, huh? You want to shut up? But then all of a sudden, since New York is only like a couple feet wide. Yeah, I remember that lady they bumped into earlier. <laughs> well, guess just what? Just a random it's ass lady. She just all she just nonstop walking oh, in the same on. area of New York all day. Oh, and he looked away. Okay. What? Oh, oh. Thanks. Kids are helpless. Not this kid. Yeah, but this time he doesn't have a house full of dangerous goodies to get us with. He's in the park. He's alone. Kids are scared of the park. There's deja vu. And again with the- it's just- no <laughs> one- No one ever knows. I mean, I would've- just takes that cowboy hat. I love the sound effects too, what? I think at the moment what I'm willing to say about this movie is that it has higher highs and lower lows in the first one. I, I, I might say Yeah, but well. quite the lower lows. <laughs> Does that mean that the movie balances out to the same score? Well, I don't know about that. We'll wait till we get to the third act. That third act makes it rise higher. It, uh, <laughs> Please use your credit card to check into the Plaza Hotel. Do they still have him? Do they have him? No. They might have, if they didn't try to stop him and steal his credit card. Well, as far as they're concerned, it was a stolen credit card in the first place, so it's reasonable for them to have done what they did. Yeah. Right. Maybe, but... Well, no, not maybe, not definitely. Maybe. Yeah, wouldn't they have gotten informed of the fact that he was missing? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, they, they probably only got informed after he got away. That's what it seems to be implied. They only just got the call that Kevin used the credit card to check into the Plaza Hotel. Let me guess, is this where the pigeon lady is? No, this is... Uh, no, this just bumps into the pigeon lady. This is his Uncle Rob's apartment. They mentioned this... Uh, oh, right. He showed in the shot earlier where he was skimming through the address book, and this was lo locations, like, that he does have family here. It's just that the building is under renovations and nobody's actually here. Oh, the perfect place for a, f a fine line. Now, I wonder why there might just happen to be a place that's currently under renovation with lots of tools yeah. lying around that no one is currently occupying and therefore there's no risk of bumping into literally anybody else. Yeah, like five minutes after uh, they said he doesn't have a house anymore with stuff to stop them. I sure wonder. <laughs> Bedtime story. <laughs> Who's this? The the, the 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 freaking jerk neighborhood? 
Well, New York, right? <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, never trust the taxi driver. We all float down here, kid. What? We all float in here, kid. The taxi guy's just like, I don't want any money. I'm just driving around with nobody giving me pay. Did Waffles just ditch us, like, forever? He, he muted himself. He's in New York. Maybe he fell asleep, I don't know. He fell asleep, he muted himself, then fell asleep. I don't want to ever take a vacation like this. So he's not scared of pigeons. Oh, that's apparent. So if he if he's not scared of pigeons, why the fuck is he scared of the pigeon lady? They're like what? Like what? 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 The, what? Run me through how? Well, I, I mean, like, when when you slowly and dramatically oh, yeah. rise up like a car. Okay, okay. Well, in this context, <laughs> oh yeah, in this context, when she just did this live pigeon lady reaction, in this context, yeah, I'd be scared. But like he first met her, like just she was just standing what? around. Like, why was he scared of her then? Oh, he got stuck. He's now he's the sticky bandit because he's stuck. Can she not talk? Come on. No, she doesn't talk. He's like, wait, wait a second. Why the hell am I scared of this woman again? <laughs> wait a second, she actually helped me. Wait a minute, she she talks? At first, you look kind of scary. But when I think about it, it's not so bad. How did she look scary? Uh, I mean, our view of what is scary won't always line up with what looks scary from the perspective of a child. Yeah, child's not scared of being in a big city by himself. Not scared of tarantulas, but some random woman with pigeons on her shoulder. Now that's like, I'm terrified. Nothing scares oh, me, fine. but that thing. So he grew up with- The old man was scared. Though. <laughs> he he grew up with the tarantula because that was his pet his brother's pet and being in the big city by himself during the daytime is a little different than being at night. Also, he did say at a certain point that he was sick of being on vacation because of how many things had gone wrong in such a condensed period of time. I could sure go for a cup of hot chocolate. How about you, my treat? You still have money? I mean, yeah. He he took the whole wallet. <laughs> yeah, OJ, you need to understand. He has a lot of grandmothers. How did you get all that money? I have a lot of grandmothers. <laughs> And also, he did almost give a tip of, like, 50-50s to Rob Schneider. The last thing he spent money on was giving the $20 donation to the Duncan's toy chest, and then everything fell apart at the seams. And he still had a whole lot of cash in the envelope. Yeah, I did. He could actually just buy New York City. Damn, the best seats. Oh god, this song. Trauma. <laughs> Yeah, well, th this is revenge from Matilda. <laughs> Why exactly do you have trauma to this specific song? Because it always played in the freaking church when I was younger, when I was forced to sit there every freaking Sunday. I will still make you watch that Sunday. No, you won't. <laughs> How much do I need to trade to make that happen? I'm not budging. OJ, OJ, you already have, like, very little room to work with with the things you want Trevor to watch slash play. Don't don't make things worse for yourself. You only have like a hundred hour RPGs to trade for him. Yeah, I'm gonna hack your phone, but the only thing I'm gonna do with your phone is change the alarm to be that specific song, and then I'm gonna stop hacking it. That's all I'm gonna oh, do. That's evil, evil. Oh yeah, and, and, oh, and you can't change the alarm either. I'm seen and heard pretty much, but then I get sent to my room a lot too. I wasn't always like this. Yeah, I will say I don't like that Kevin needs to, like, relearn the exact same lessons again. I was gonna wait till after this, but I guess we can bring it about it now. She doesn't tie into Kevin's arc anywhere near as neatly as Old Man Marley did in the first movie, because Old Man Marley in the first movie was supposed to be a deliberate parallel to Kevin in terms of being estranged from their families, whereas the main thing that she's talking about here is the fact that her lover left her at some point, which isn't quite the same thing but yes it is it is quite frustrating that he does essentially go through the exact same arc he did the first time around which is sort of what i was getting at earlier at the beginning of the movie where it seems like the family's dynamic has completely reset back to how it was the first time around just so they can retread everything again and yeah checks calendar wait it's not christmas it's groundhog day you've done something wrong a lot of things did you know that a good deed erases a bad deed good deeds count for extra tonight Good deeds worth 50 points. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the main takeaway here is that good deeds outdo the bad, even though it's like, has Kevin really done all that in this movie that's worthy of, like, I've done so many horrible things. Like, almost get killed. Like, using the resources I had available to me to check into a hotel so I had some place to stay, which also was the only hotel that I knew about in New York City because of the commercial that played earlier. It's like, I feel like he's just been fending for himself up until this point. So if Kevin just didn't watch commercials, he'd be fucked. Which is kind of what I mean when I'm like, it doesn't really tie in that cleanly compared to the first movie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, so how are we going to run into the, the burglars again? We just are. 
<laughs> did, did we just do? Well, clearly what they're setting up is that Kevin wants to do a good deed to undo a bad deed. Their plan to rob the t toy store, which they foolishly exposited yeah. directly to him. Yeah. No, only uh, don't don't don't, don't let Harry in with that, Trevor. Only Marv foolishly exposited it. <laughs> and Harry was trying to put the kibosh on it. Money in the cash register. Mr. Duncan is gonna donate children's hospital. At midnight tonight, we're hitting Duncan's toy chest. You can mess with a lot of things. Can't mess with kids on Christmas. Oh, there you go. There you go again. Oh, here comes the music again. No, uh, Kevin was looking at that kid while saying that, so I just imagine that kid's like, what the fuck is he talking about right now? I mean, literally, as in, I can't hear you. I'm like two floors above. Yeah. <laughs> you're whispering. Like, my window is closed, my guy. Is this the same music? I'm pretty sure this is different music, actually. This does feel like... It's the same melody that's been reorchestrated. Yeah, it's a rearrangement. Damn, air vents and movies this way. <laughs> oh my god, it's Among Us! Shut up. <laughs> what the fuck? It's OJ, that's my line, okay? I'm supposed to be the one saying bullshit Among Us stuff. I mean, it was the e it was a way too easy joke to make. Well, I mean, at this point, like, all the, f all the three of us have done... Brooks, you made it just uh, in time. I wonder what compelled you to join. Were well, your Among Us senses tingling? His Among Us senses were tingling. Put on your holiday profile oh picture and join OJ's parsec. Dude, I love that the show. Could, I think we can. So are we? Are we pausing? I could pause. He doesn't need to. He can just join OJ's parsec. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess I'm changing my thing. <laughs> You don't want to be the odd one out, Brooks. Yeah, you, you don't want to be the imposter among us, Brooks. Hey, hmm. holiday roots. Alright, how do I join your person? How? Uh, do you not do that for Mario? I feel like we. I think I'd reset my computer. Oh, Jake, can you. Do, wait, do we need to pause to set this up? Okay, Brooks, you're not. We're not gonna let Brooks miss this scene at the hotel here. Okay, well, uh, let's pause for a bit so okay. I can set it up. Alright. If we have a bit of luck, we will we'll, uh, pause in a really good Tim Curry frame. Possibly. You want me to pull okay. up Possibly. Dusty? So while we're in this little intermission, Brooks, this seems like a good as time as any to bring up so that it doesn't get lost in the shuffle of the climax. Do you remember in your junior year English class, the guy who did who delivered a speech about how old movies suck and he used Home Alone as an example to do it? Yes. What about it? I was just, I, because I, I wanted to bring, it, I was going to bring it up while we were watching the first movie, but unfortunately I, I had to, I had to recount all the events without you, because I, I wasn't actually in that class, it was just you were the one who, who had to, who listened to it, I just heard about it tangentially through you. I don't really remember a whole lot about it, but it was, it was a weird speech, it wasn't that good. Nothing will top his freshman year one though. What was his freshman year one? Why uh, weed should be legalized. I actually, as I, as I, as I grow older, I, I learn to appreciate Cause now, now it's actually happening, so hey. Okay, are we ready to go back to the commentary now? Yeah, I, I'm ready if you guys are. Just... I'm ready, 117, 18, right? Okay, on go. Three, two, one, go. All right, here we go. That was a very dramatic space bar press, whoever did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three, two, one, go. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> what kind of hotel allows a child to check in alone? Boy had a very convincing story. What kind of idiots do you have working here? The finest in New York. <laughs> <laughs> the finest idiots the in finest New York. idiots. Christmas Eve, and because of you, our child is lost in one of the biggest cities in the Alright, hold on, buddy. Let's not shift the blame too far away. Let's rewind to the beginning. Make sure your kid gets on the plane. Oh yeah, I forgot to- Burks, how many Home Alone movies have you seen? I've seen one, two... I've seen the one with the terrorists. Oh. The one with the terrorists? I, I was, that doesn't really narrow it down, Brooks. I, I was gonna keep that uh. as the surprise, but... Yeah, okay. I get- yeah. Okay, then. Oh, wait, did I spoil it? Oh. Wow, Brooks. Brooks shows up and he's already spoiling shit. Whoops. So, do they just not sweep the area in case, like, kids are trying to stay overnight? Kids? Oh, what are they doing, the fucking 24-hour overnight challenge? I mean, they do it at Ikea, so, like... Ikea, I died, guys! I did the Ikea overnight challenge at 3 a.m. gone wrong! We don't know for sure where their hiding place is. It's probably in that one friggin' that random house there to stick their head out and freeze. If it is the house, then that, that, that's a bit of an oversized how they didn't manage to actually catch them. They probably thought he was part of the, the, the houses. Yeah, no, he was, like... He was like, I don't know who would buy that okay. this locks up door. So remember that thing I said remember that thing I said in the original about how Kevin needed to piss the robbers off enough to force them to follow him into the neighbor's house so that he could get them caught by the police. So 
out of the gate, he takes their picture. That's all he needs. That's more than enough. That well, not really, because they're prison escapees, so, like, they're already looking for them. I don't know what you think that has to do with what I said. But how, how, would, they, how would they get them just with the picture? Because they already need them. My point is not that the, the picture is all he needs to prove that they robbed the store. My point is that the fact that he has evidence of them at the store is oh, enough for- okay, okay. Is enough to get them to chase after him. That's a bit. <laughs> he goes to the fucking moon, and so he's dead. Right? What? How is he alive? What? He certainly is dead, right? It is now Home Alone canon that Marv weighs like a couple thousand pounds. Hey guys. Dude, they're idiots then, bro. <laughs> you didn't- you just caught on to that, Brooks. Yeah, Ugh. I don't know about that seesaw trick. Marv- Marv is literally an elephant. Also, I never understood why they have the mom show up here, because, like, it makes you think she's gonna play something of a role in the climax, but she doesn't. She just- She, yeah, she arrives, like, very abruptly, is like, oh, she's here. Yeah, like, she, she shows up and then immediately leaves, which is really lucky, because if her timing was just a little bit different, like, by a matter of seconds, this would have all played out very, very differently. Yeah. Hey, what did I tell you about killing people, Kevin? Okay, so to jump ahead a little bit, his plan here is to get them caught somewhere that isn't the apartment. But he leads them to the apartment anyway. And clearly, having the picture is all that the robbers need to have the motivation to chase after Kevin, and yet he still leads them to a, another fun house of torture for no reason. So, like, the argument for Kevin being a psychopath in the original does not hold water, but there is no logical defense to be made here for why he doesn't just run to the park immediately, which is where he ultimately wants them to go. But but movie funny traps. So the injuries sustained in the first movie were relatively grounded in realism. Some of them might be a bit of a stretch, like the iron smashing on his face, but I don't think they ever crossed a point of no return. It, it's easy enough to believe that the adrenaline of the situation is enough to help them power through the pain. But here, Marv launches Harry into the sky like an actual Looney Tunes. Dude, th this alone would kill someone right here, bro. Yes, yes. J just this first, the first brick. Game over, yeah. Yeah. Y you're done. You're done. You're done. It's done. over. It's over. It's over. Direct it. Kevin's just like getting a lot of pleasure from this, dude. Yes, yeah, like that's the thing. Like in the original, it was it was a necessity for Kevin to set up the house the way that he did. But there, he absolutely does not need to do this. Yeah. So what happened, Trevor? Is in the first movie, he did it out of necessity, but then he realized he sort of he's like, wait, I'm enjoying this. I, I get two brick, two! He gets a high off of this now, Trevor. Two bricks! I love how Harry just doesn't even mind. <laughs> you wanna throw bricks? Throw, throw another one. Proceeds to throw another one. Three! Three! Oh, three <laughs> times you should be fucking dead. Uh, uh, uh. Three bricks later and he's still conscious. You should be dead. What if he threw a fourth one? What if he hit him with four bricks? He'd be sent to the after- Four! Four! Come on. He's dead. Dude, why did they put up with it for so long? <laughs> Here's the interesting thing, Brooks. On the on the TV version of this, they, they made it so that Kevin throws the first brick and then they cut straight to Harry saying, no one throws bricks at me and gets away with it. Which is a much better cut because A, at least you could kind of argue that maybe he'd still be conscious if not heavily cerebrally damaged. And also it's like, okay, one brick is enough for Harry to be like, all right, that's enough. We're, we're charging you down. Instead of waiting for four bricks to be thrown. No, we still see like three bricks on the ground in the previous shots. Yeah, but that's 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 easy. I guess I guess you could argue that he missed. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Hmm. A rope? You keep pulling the rope, yes. A random rope? Oh no. Me when rope. Hmm, you don't wanna do that actually. No! What exactly was that? Is that a nail gun? A staple gun. Yeah, it, was, it was a staple gun. Oh. Oh. Game Ow. over again. Also, why would you try like, turn around to push that? <laughs> so basically, Kevin's fighting against Harry and Marv's ghost. That's how they were able to find Kevin so quickly in New York, because they're ghosts. Oh! Yeah, sure, try again. That's not okay. That and again! That shot was... Nah, bro. Second, every shot. <laughs> why do they split up, man? Uh, well, so the idea here is to corner him. Yeah, but like, bro... <laughs> Howie, howie. By the way, the other thing is that, like, the Sticky Bandits were not as integral to the plot of this film as they were the first time around, because the, the whole thing with the original is that it's robbers trying to get into Kevin's home, whereas here they just happen to be in New York, and then Kevin decides to stop their evil plot. Harry! I've reached the top! 
Okay, he really didn't look down to see the no, giant no, gaping the, hole no, in the floor. The, the, the first movie already established that these guys don't look down at any point. Taking don't look down to the next level. But like, I don't even think you need to look down. I feel like just your peripheral vision would be enough to see that there is no <laughs> yeah. floor below you. Dude, I, four bricks to the head is a hell of a drug, man. A, yeah, no, yeah, dude, four bricks to the head. I'm no, surprised no, no, he no, can no, even no, walk. See, he, he thought that, that that was a trap. That, uh, he painted the floor to look like there was no floor. You gotta give him some credit. He's able to walk with four bricks to the head here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, at, yeah. That, at that point, we're being very selective with what amount of damage those bricks do to his brain. Mm -hmm. You gotta do better than this, kid! <laughs> and no, 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 no. Multiple levels of even more death. <laughs> It's like, the traps from the first movie were just more like, there's a reason why I mentioned how they were made out of homemade supplies, they were easy to replicate. These are just, like, they were just sort of minor obstacles. He's actively trying to kill them now. He's chucking bricks yeah, at them, yeah, dropping you pick, bags. You, you, you pick any one trap from this movie, they're fucking dead. Game over. Done. You do not pass. Go. You do not get the $200. You're dead. Freeing bricks. Was that back, was that back full of, what, like, knives and, and stuff? The, the bag was filled with tools that you use to repair. So, like, yeah. wrenches and just... A lot of heavy metallic objects, but yeah, which... blades and heavy metal. Also, I guess still not looking at the floor, huh? It's worse than that because then suddenly the floor just becomes a ramp, and he slides all the way across. That no, that's not how that works. What? He, it's a magnet just sucking him in. It's a vacuum cleaner. So it's like someone's actually just dragging him down. There's like it's a ghost. Yeah, like look at all. Uh, look uh, at that. Hammers, wrenches. Hammers. <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> How much plot armor do you guys have? <laughs> oh, Holy shit, dude. Level. Dude, their plot armor is like enchanted Minecraft diamond armor out here. <laughs> they look like they took a lot more damage in the first movie. That's a lot of damage. And wait till you see what's coming next. <laughs> wait till you see what's coming next. <laughs> it gets worse. It always sure I do does. like the detail, though. I like the detail, though, that Harry's like checking everything that... It was a trap in the first movie. Meanwhile, Marv over here looking like a fucking ghost. Yeah, it's just a clown now. Looking like fucking King Boo. Also, what, the, what are the police going to think when they find him like this? I, I I didn't know wax sculptures could commit crimes. Nice of Kevin to deliver a paper towel roll for him to dry his hands off. Or dry his face <laughs> off, rather. Oh, the, okay, I know. Oh, Death. Damn! Dude, this- I love this gif. Like, alright, if Mar even if you the believe Marv could have miraculously survived the four bricks to the skull- Gizzy, 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 gizzy! What the fuck, man? Relax, dude. I want you to close- I want you to close no, your eyes and listen dead. to this- Come on! Close your eyes and listen to this out of context. Okay, but why turn it off, though? Bro- bro- Brooks. 2023, why turn it off? <laughs> I love how he's still checking all the light poles. I really want it reiterated that none of this was necessary. You did not need yeah. to bring him here. One thing I really don't like though is that how Marv is sustaining all the damage while Harry has been like almost unscathed so far. Really? But until now. You're really bad at picking times to say things, you know that? I know, I like when my jokes like. Fuck everything up. Take your head off? Yet again, he's a hothead. Put your head off! There's a- What the fuck? Come on! <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> Was that kerosene? <laughs> he was like, like, I like, I, I love the thought that Kevin knew. He was like, okay, what's Harry gonna do when his head's on fire? I know, he's gonna fucking hand stand up <laughs> with a goddamn toilet and <laughs> stick his Start head in there. Instead of sticking his beanie off. Not <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, I don't understand. What, what, ex what did ex even explode? He, he, there was a shot where he poured flammable liquid into the toilet or, or while he was setting the traps. Right. Jesus Christ. But it's just, it like, yeah. It's not- not only did he handstand perfectly, he holds the pose after the nuke goes off. That's the best part. <laughs> like, I can't deny that that's funny, but what the fuck? <laughs> Don't do that! God, dude, this is like, so campy, I love it. No! Don't do it! What, what are you doing? I don't even think that would've worked. so funny, dude. Why would Kevin think that would've worked? I'M COMING UP! Okay, move. Get out of the way. Move. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Ah! Oh, 
Oh my god. Just, what? Game over. Yeah. It's this, uh, again. There's no way. Powder Man over here. No. How have you not been murdered already? There's no way to suspend your disbelief he's, this time. This just, just, they're just. He's actually, a... I, a, a, a genuine question. How did he not dodge out of the way? You, you surely should have seen that coming, right? Oh, dear headlights, something, something. Look, I know he, he got a, a billion of stuff on his head, but that's not a good idea. Like, Come on. Okay, I'm surprised this guy even has any, like, blood vessels. Exactly. <laughs> any blood in his brain right now. You should be dead. Let alone arm strength. Don't you know a kid always wins against two idiots? <laughs> So if he was holding on to the, the ladder while doing that, did that crush his hands too? You'd think so. It, like his finger, like his fingers had gone extinct though over here. A lot of them ha would have gone e extinct though. <laughs> like, I'm gonna do a magic trick. I'm gonna make Harry's fingers disappear. Don't you remember what happened last year? Do, do, do either of you remember what happened last year? I mean, yeah, they do don't you? have memory anymore. Their memory got knocked out. Their The SD card with their memory in their brain is corrupted, Trevor. You need to understand. What I really love about this is that Harry knows to anticipate the paint cans, but Kevin knows to anticipate that they anticipate the paint cans. Ow! Right in the stars! It's two! Yeah, he will never put more. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> he just, he just brings out that, like, how do you survive? Death. Dead. Again. Again. Like, instantly. You shouldn't be able to say, whoa, while falling down. You should be dead. And then for a little more insult to injury, why not? What the <laughs> just find out another. It's a, it was, it's Kevin saw it. Ah. <laughs> it's so Kara good. is not showing this it's because so the, good. there's literally no way they're surviving that because it's going to fall on their head. Kevin wasn't going to do this until he noticed a buy one get one free deal on iron bars. <laughs> yeah. Why it's... are they still trying, man? Why are they still alive? How Why are you? Are you how are you breathing? How are you able to breathe? How are you talking right now? Oh my oh, god! There's a, just, just in case you need a bit more. But I guess my my steel man argument for why they're still trying is that just they they're, they're this adrenaline. Yeah, well that, but also they're just d driven by revenge against the person who no, inflicted no, all Trevor, these injuries. They on. realize they realize that they are gods after they don't die to any of this shit. They're like, we are invincible. Let's it, kill this kid. And it's also important to remember that they need to get the photograph because it's evidence that they were there at the toy store while they were robbing mm -hmm. it. Okay, because that's your concern right now, and so you're gonna die trying. You can definitely hear that. Please. Get out of the way, come on. <laughs> yeah. You're not this dumb. It that looks like it's getting that louder. Is. What's that sound? What the hell? Why, does it, sound like we're, why does it sound like <laughs> imminent death? I, I just love the shot of it wobbling down the stairs. <laughs> I also, I also love this shot of them just getting pushed into the wall as it just slides across. That was the sound of a tool chest falling, falling down, down the, the stairs. stairs. There's no denying that the ending of this movie is absolutely hysterical. But it also makes, it's it's so much more flimsy than the original. When you really break this down, none, none of this, this makes, makes any sense. sense. Ignoring the lethality of any of the traps, again, I want to reiterate, he could have just dri taken them to the park where he was going to lead them eventually. But... There is one steel man argument you can make, which is that he wanted to lead them into this house because it's easier for them, for the police to corner them when they're inside an enclosed environment. However, he doesn't call the police when they're in the enclosed environment. I think he's just a masochist. Sadist, I believe, is the term you're looking Sadist, for. Sadist, yeah. Yes, suck brick. <laughs> oh, hey, Waffles is back. All right, so I got like a little story to tell. Oh boy, I can't wait. Here we go. On the toilet, taking a shit. Know what, what I mean? Why Waffles? I mean, hey, to be fair, no, this was all this was all foreshadowed earlier when Waffles was talking about his constipation. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Hopefully, you don't get coal in your stocking because it might not be coal. Oh, but no. yeah, I was on the bathroom taking a shit. So like it was for a while. So then I like waffles. Why are you here? So I completely <laughs> forgot about everything that was happening. So like after I was fi finished taking the shit, I kind of forgot about everything. So I started snacking and watching a show, and I went, "Oh shit!" I had I was recording something, wasn't I? Waffles. Are you telling me you couldn't have just gotten another flat tire? You, you couldn't have just drove it over a nail or something? Waffles, what am I going to hear when you send me your audio file? <laughs> oh, dear God. Just, whoa, what the fuck is gonna blow? More like Jurassic shit! It's just a bomb going off. Like, come on! Oh, look, fireworks. Just burning them. Yeah, you're dead now. 
And then... <laughs> yeah! Yeah! It's just... So Billion deaths! Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god, I can't... It's... Yo, the sticky bandits are sticky! <laughs> it's so good! Yeah. Now they're... They're really sticky now! Oh my god! Okay, is he calling the police? Now he's calling the police? Hello, the two guys who have Doug's toy chest are in the park. Look for fireworks. <laughs> yeah, now you call the police. Now that they've left the enclosed environment, you baited them. He could have, he could have baited them into the building, ran to the top, cl climbed down the rope, and then called the police. But he didn't, because he, I get, I guess the only argument left is that he just wanted to torture them. Oh, this is stupid. This is so Kevin dumb. Kevin pulls a. This is. Kevin uh -huh. pulls a. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Wait, wait, what are we doing? He doesn't get back up after that. He just lays there until they show up. So in the original, the robbers grew wise to his tricks, and then because of that, they outwitted him. But in this one, he literally just slips on ice. Like I, <laughs> he tripped. I I don't like that. That that's what turns the tide against Kevin here. Hey, it just takes one bad day, man. Also, why was that spin necessary? Like the, the camera movements there. Eh. Oh, good thing they're leading Kevin into this like, a specific park here. Yeah, specifically this park. Just th this park. Specifically where he told the cops they would be. Mm -hmm. That's something. Oh, so you had a gun the entire time, did you? How does this gun work? This gun's totally not broken by now. I feel like there were better chances you had of shooting him than right here, right now, when your gloves are all slippery. It's wrong. Important reminder that Kevin was the one to go into Old Man Marley's house in the original, but here the robber specifically led Kevin to this exact spot in, in the park. I'm trying to shoot her! Get it? Because they're sticky. They're in a really sticky situation. Oh no. My only weakness is birds. Damn, dude. Come on, lift That's them a, up. Lift them I up. Do like, so I do like all these shots with the birds, though. So, did she know they were going to be sticky? Because, like, what was the plan there? I mean, that she could look at them and see that they're sticky, for one. But even if they weren't sticky, that still might have worked. Yeah, the idea being that just throwing the birds seen in their general direction will f cause the birds to flock towards them. Yeah, as a distraction. Holy shit, what? he's attacking me. <laughs> Are you... Why? Why? <laughs> he did say look for fireworks. Yeah, the reason why is because he told the cops to look for fireworks to know where the robbers were. No, but like... Why didn't he just, like, nudge it at them? Like, that would have surely killed them. Would it have? Would it have? Would it have? Let's be honest, Waffles. Are you absolutely sure it would have killed them after everything else they survived? We just killed two people. Let's go, baby. I don't know how they survived so long, but, like, we gotta end them. Remember, if this makes the papers, we're no longer the wet bandits. We're the sticky bandits. I don't... Hey, uh, Brooks. The sticky bandits. Brooks, what name do you think is better, the wet bandits or the sticky bandits? Dude, both are equally S-tier. Hey, Mr. Duncan? Yes. I found his name. Looks like a kid broke your window. I broke your window to catch the bad guys. I'm sorry. Do you have insurance? If you don't, I'll send you some money if I ever get back to Chicago. Merry Christmas, Kevin McAllister. P.S. Thanks for the turtle doves. Turtle doves. Oh. It isn't possible I can see all of them. Can I just see my mother? I'll never want another thing as long as I live. Kevin? Mom? Wow, that was fast. Christmas, Mom. How'd you know I was No! Well, I know no! Stop! Why? Can you not do that, please? Yeah, there's a lot for you to edit out, Trevor. I'm sorry. Oh, you have no idea. You have no fucking idea. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't When we send our commentary tracks, my commentary track is gonna have a bunch of me sniffling and blowing my nose, and then Waffles is gonna have a bomb blowing up, followed by a flushing. Brooks, you have no idea how much work it takes to untangle the mess that is these recording sessions. No, you're not messes. You're very organized. Easy for you to say when you aren't here for 80% of it. No, 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 no. Yeah, Waffles, no, 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 Waffles, no, no, Waffles. Organized, waffles. Organized. You're recording, you, your recording may not be messy, but you were making a mess while your recording was going on. Listen, all right? When someone has the shit, they gotta shit. <laughs> That's a quote. Dude, remind me to carve that onto Waffle's tombstone. All right, it's better out than in. Yeah, <sighs> Shrek is down the hall and to the left. Peter! Are you sure we're in the right room? Take credit. Take credit. They're like, what? They're like, what Come the on. fuck? Peter, Santa actually came. Don't open any of mine, I mean it. Oh, that toothbrush is mine, goddammit. If Kevin hadn't screwed up in the first place, again, then we wouldn't be in this perfect and huge hotel room with a truckload of all this free stuff. So, it could only fair that Kevin get to open up the first present. And they just don't wait for him to open it. Oh, that wasn't something, uh, fragile. Yeah, here you go. 
boom, and there it, it just, it just it, a bomb goes off. Well, should have put the sticker saying it was fragile then. <laughs> yeah, it, it was fireworks. They just don't wait for him. Yeah, they, they, he says open the first press, and then he doesn't actually open the first. Everyone just dives in. So basically, all he accomplished <laughs> was delaying the present opening. No, no, no. But like he'll open it, and then like the sticky bandits will like appear from the present. But yeah, he needed if yeah he needed to be able to leave right here, so they had it so that everyone else was distracted. When I see that robe he has on, all I can think of is the Polar Express. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of yeah, that because I haven't yeah. seen it. We will see it someday. Uh, no promises about that one. Maybe if we uh, if we do a Pinocchio quintuple feature, we'll see it. I'm not watching all five Pinocchio movies. Well, that's what you think. That's what I know. It's a turtle dove. I have one, you have one. As long as we each have a turtle dove, we'll be friends forever. Thank you. I won't forget you. Trust me. Mr. McAllister's room service bill, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Okay, it's just a family tradition. Kevin, why is this as long as Santa's <laughs> naughty list? Dude, that's not even that much, bro. Kevin! You spent $967 on room service! But even, even with inflation, I feel like it should be more than that. Yeah, dude, that's insane. Anyway... Dude. There's Home Alone 2. I still like it more than the first one, even though the first one's better than the second one. All right, yo, I gotta go real quick. Movie, movie, okay. I came in for the last bit, very funny. Yippee. I don't know what score I would give this out of 10, though. Oh, out of 10, I'd give it five wet bandits out of 20 sticky bandits. Probably say a six out of 10 for this. I guess I would also do that. It was so around that same place. It's got some a couple of good scenes and it's still very enjoyable, but man, is this just the first movie but worse? I think you missed that better. Hey, hey, you can like it more, but it's a worse film. Come on. I think you guys are gonna increase your score when we watch the next four heaps of shit. Or, or I'll just give them even lower scores. How about that? How about no, because we don't have negative numbers, Guganic. We're out. <sighs> there's a lot, there's a lot of, of wiggle room. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Home Sweet Home Alone is the masterpiece. You, like, you guys just don't appreciate it. Okay, I, I think I remember Home Alone 5 being like a bit better than Home Alone 4. But, uh, yeah. Home Alone 3 is just going to be boring. Home Alone 4 is going to be hilariously bad. And Home Alone 5, I, I don't care what happens because Trevor's finally going to see it, which is great. All right, so we just skipped three then. No, I, I said the third is boring. Yeah, exactly. We don't. I don't want to watch boring. Well, then don't. You're not going to show up to the commentary anyway. You're going to have something oh! happen at the last. Oh second. no! Don't worry. Don't worry, Waffles. How be mean. a convenient nail. Don't worry, Waffles. Santa Claus will make sure that there's a little nail on the road right as the commentary is about <laughs> to happen, so you can't show up at the last minute. It's all good. No, be quiet of it. What I would say is that the circumstances that result in both Kevin and the Wet Bandits, sorry, Sticky Bandits, arriving in New York City at the same time is astronomically low as to how, it's like, it's, none of it's strictly impossible, but it, it revolves around a lot of illogical and contrived events taking place. But then you get to the heart of the movie in the middle chunk where you have everything that happens at the, at the Plaza Hotel and everything that happens with the Duncan's toy chest, which is all really, really solid and really, really funny. And then you get back to the third act where just everything flies completely off the rails. There's no, there's no, in the first movie, there was a sense of keeping it grounded and restricted to, like, what could a child feasibly defend their home with given the resources they had available to them. In the second movie, it's just like, let's go as big as possible and also go as murderous as possible. And it didn't really care. Like my, like I said, Kevin's ultimate plan is get them into the park and call the police. But because they were already dead set on hunting him down as soon as they saw him take the picture, he could have done that immediately and it would have been fine. But yet he still led them through the funhouse of horrors for absolutely no reason, except to give the audience the zany laughs that they expected. Uh, it's so like the stakes are bigger than they are in the first movie but also a key part of what made the original work is that it's the, it's something that every kid both dreams of and fears it's a, a very personal grounded story and, and ultimately for all the hijinks of the climax it's got a very very heartfelt thrust to its narrative and the ending the ending isn't just like hey let's beat up some robbers for some fun it's my home is under attack and i'm the only one who can protect it and again to some extent it's 
the kid fantasizing about what if there was no one else around and I'm entirely home alone and I have to do this myself. You can't really say that here because they weren't coming after the apartment. They were coming after the store and Kevin immediately shot that plan in its foot before it could even get off the ground. It, it definitely reeks of a film that started with the same storyboard and just had the names change and the locations and all that. Of course, good stuff came out of it. Like I said, that's stuff to do with the Plaza Hotel and the Duncan's Toy Chest. There's plenty of good stuff to have come out of it. But, man, it's so much... There's so much about this movie that does not hold up under scrutiny. In the first movie, I already questioned how they survived. In this movie, I question how they are even still... Are, are, is their body still in, in back, intact at all whatsoever? <laughs> In the first movie, I don't really think there's anything that would really cross a line to where it just becomes unbelievable that they would have ever survived. But th in this movie, they do that with the first single. Whether you consider the brick... First brick. The, either the first brick or launching Harry into the air and then smashing onto the car. Like, dead? Maybe not, but certainly incapacitated and unable to give any further pursuit to Kevin. Well, I, 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 could, I could already argue, for example, that in the first movie, the stairs. If you fall down the stairs and fall back on your head, that, that will do significant damage. He tumbled to you. backwards. He didn't actually land on his head. Yeah. Oh, well, that's how I saw it. But if, if you hit, hit your head on the ground, and that happens on this, in this movie as well, you're dead, or you're, ha or you have significant brain damage. Unfortunately, can tell you that that actually happened to a family member. And that was not even from that high of a place. Yeah, so I, I've just rewound the scene. He lands on his back and then tumbles backwards down the stairs. He does not land on his head. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it goes kind of fast, but. Well. Anyone else have anything they want to say about Home Alone 2? I absolutely love the sticky bandits. So, okay, so Home Alone 1 has the wet bandits, Home Alone 2 have the sticky bandits, and then Home Alone 3 have the f fucking... The... 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 the uh, you probably should have had a name know. prepared if you were going to do that. I... Fuck it up. They're the juicy bandits. The juicy bandits are my favorite. I will say there is a part of me that's like, these are such perfect holiday movies, it, it's a shame we can't release them on Christmas Eve, but unfortunately we have more movies to go, so... Yeah, I know, there's, there, these, are, these are all such perfect holiday movies, you know, all six. No. Or it's just flawless masterpieces of holiday cinema. Yeah, I believe, I think that's it for now. So, uh, thank you all for tuning in to our Home Alone double feature, the, the beginning of our Home Alone arc. I'm very interested in the seeing... Beginning of the end. I'm very interested in seeing which one people prefer in the live chat, whether because I, I to, to make clear, I, I still adore both these movies with all my heart. I, I rewatch them every single year, and I, I clearly you saw me having an absolute blast watching this movie. It, it will never ever get old. But if you put them under a critical lens, I will defend to the death of the first one will hold up significantly better than the second one. But I'm very curious to see what the poll results look like when this premiere happens. Unfortunately, this is not the end of our Home Alone journeys, because we still have three and four and five and the sixth one, Home Sweet Home Alone, so... The advent calendar of Home Alone videos, you got your two chocolates, but then we let Waffles deal with the rest of the chocolates. Plenty more Home Alone goodness coming your way throughout the rest of this month. Last, last year, FG and I did the Toy Story arc, where we watched one Toy Story movie a week leading up to the release, or leading up to, the, leading up to Christmas, and we're doing... Doing a similar thing this time, but with Home Alone movies, something that's actually... Well, I was gonna say something that's actually holiday-themed, but the thing is, the this Christmas in the first Toy Story movie, so, you know. If only there was only two weeks in December. And plus, the, the, the Toy Story movies always get aired on TV as a part of the ABC 25 Days of Christmas thing, so... There's there's a bit of justification for why I, uh, that it, that became the holiday arc, but at least at least this time there's no room, there's no ambiguity here, it's just... It's all holiday movies, so that's what we're that's what we're doing. Anyone else have any closing thoughts before I sign off? Well, closing thoughts. Uh, I got I posted an image when I searched Home Alone three. Uh, that's the the first image there on the IMDb. Yeah, link. it's yeah, it, it's the first thing, the first screenshot they show, and because that's the uh, that's the thumbnail for the for the trailer. What a great thumbnail! Final scores for both Home Alone one and two. Home Alone one, I'd give like. Yeah, probably like a nine. Personally, I would probably also give Home Alone two a nine, but like objectively, mm, objectively, it's probably a seven for me. Subjectively, nine for both movies. Although, 
Home Alone 2 would be like a 9.1 or 9.2 for me. Yeah, first movie is 9, second movie is uh, a 6. Might change once we get to the end of this marathon, though. Actually, first movie, 8.5, and then second movie, 9 for me. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm sticking with 9 for Home Alone and 6 for Home Alone 2. I, I agree with the 9 for the first movie. That was great. Uh, there, there were not that many problems that I saw with them. Second movie, I would say 6 as well. It's like... Enjoyment level for me is like nine, an eight and a half, but quality wise, not none of this makes any sense. Well, I guess that's a cap on our on our first entry of the Home Alone Marathon. Yep, see you in a week. Thanks all for watching. Stay tuned for next time. Hope to see you all sometime next week. I don't know exactly when for our Home Alone three commentary. Goodbye. Goodbye.